Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Potter, Nebraska, where the Hay Springs Hawks are getting ready to take on the Potter Dix Coyotes here this afternoon in girls' varsity basketball action. The pregame clock just started. We are just under 19 minutes to the opening tip of today's game. Thanks a lot for joining us on Sheridan County Journal Star.net coverage of Hay Springs Hawk Basketball 2015. We'll step aside for a word from some sponsors, and we will be back with some pregame activities, starting lineups, and some other things for you as we get closer to the opening tip. 18 minutes and 30 seconds to the opening tip of girls varsity basketball action here from Potter between the Hay Springs Hawks and the Potter Dicks Coyotes. Hi, I'm Clint Anderson, and I hope you enjoyed today's game. Wherever we're broadcasting from, you can bet that I got there in a Ford vehicle from Sides and Milburn Ford in Rushville. I've been a Sides and Milburn customer for over 20 years, and I can't imagine going anywhere else to buy or trade vehicles. I may be able to find a cheaper vehicle somewhere else, but the hometown service I get at Sides and Milburn Ford is worth way more than a trip to Rapid City or Denver. I hope you enjoy today's game. And when you're ready to trade vehicles, stop in and see the good folks at Sides and Milburn Ford in Rushville. Kim Marlatt and Brian Felker at Physical Therapy West and Gordon have over 30 years of combined experience in providing physical therapy and sports medicine services. Contact PT West for care following injury, sprains, fractures, or treatment of joint, muscle, and back pain. PT West provides individualized rehabilitation following joint replacement, surgery, or stroke. Don't suffer, don't live with pain, and get back to the activities you enjoy. Call PT West at 308-282-0203 or stop by with questions at 100 South Main in Gordon. New Holland has equipped farmers with the right technology for over a century and continues to provide smart innovations like our exclusive corn rower attachment for our CR Series Combine. We make certain you have all the tools to grow your bottom line while improving efficiency and productivity, allowing you to work smarter in order to spend more time with the ones you love. That's New Holland Smart. Visit your local New Holland dealer today. Great Plains Communications. Great Plains Communications values its Nebraska roots. For four generations, family-owned Great Plains Communications has provided local service in Nebraska. For more than 100 years, our technicians have lived and worked in the communities we serve. Local service, Nebraska-owned. Great Plains Communications. Great Plains Communications. Welcome home.
Well, we are back here in Potter, Nebraska as we get ready for girls varsity basketball action between the Hay Springs Hawks and the Potter Dicks Coyotes. Let's take a quick look at starting lineups for these two teams here this afternoon. First for the Hay Springs Hawks, they come into today's game with a record of four wins and six losses. They fell last night at home to Class C1 Gordon Rushville. Uh, they gave it a heck of a go, though, and hung tough with the, uh, with the Mustangs, but they finally fell by a final score of 57 to 45. Starters for today's game, number 12, Jen Sherbarth. She is a 5-foot, 7-inch senior. Number 14 is Kate Roberts. She is a 5'11 senior. Number 20, Emma Roberts, a 5-foot, 9-inch freshman. Number 32 is Whitney Hiding, a 5-foot, 6-inch senior. And last night, Whitney uh, went off for 21 points in the loss to the Gordon Rushville Mustangs. And final starter for today's action, number 44 is Tana Badge. She is a 5-foot, 9-inch sophomore getting the start here this afternoon as we get ready for action here from Potter Dix High School. 10 minutes and 30 seconds left in the pregame festivities. Let's take a look at the Potter Dix Coyotes now. They come into today's game with an eight and two record. So it'll be a tall order for the Hawks here this afternoon against the eight and two Potter Dix Coyotes. Their starting lineup will be number 10, Dawson Sharman. She is a five foot seven inch sophomore. Number 12 is Brooke Glass. She is a 5-foot, 7-inch sophomore. Number 14 is Anna McLaughlin, a 5'11 junior. Number 22 is Savannah Shaw. She is a 5-foot, 4-inch junior. And number 32 is Alexis Roselle. She is a 5-foot, 8-inch sophomore. So a very young lineup, all sophomores and juniors, to start the game for Potter Dix here this afternoon. Say thanks to today's sponsors. Sand Hill State Bank in Hay Springs is proud to support the Hawks. Locally owned, locally focused. Sand Hill State Bank, the most committed brand in banking. SandHillState.com, member FDIC. Security First Bank of Hay Springs is your hometown bank. Proudly supporting the Hawks, they're FDIC insured and an equal opportunity lender. Security First Bank, a relationship you can count on. And the Pioneer Manor is a premier skilled nursing and assisted living facility located in Hay Springs. We provide rehabilitation services and around-the-clock skilled care in a comfortable and friendly environment. At Pioneer Manor, our guiding principle is to provide outstanding and innovative health care in an environment that remembers the importance of the individual and the family. Our staff of dedicated professionals embodies the values that we cherish most, a nurturing spirit and a commitment to quality. Eight minutes and 30 seconds left in the pregame as we get ready for girls varsity basketball action between Hay Springs and Potter Dix. We'll step aside and we'll be back in just a minute here on Sheridan County Journal Star.net coverage of Hay Springs Hawk Basketball 2015. This is my 2012 Ford Focus from Sides & Milburn Ford in Rushville. I bought this car for short trips around the area and thought that I was getting an inexpensive disposable car. What I got was a roomy, comfortable, well-built car that gets outstanding fuel economy. It's great for going to Lincoln for a Husker game. I consistently get above 35 miles per gallon and it comes in a package that is surprisingly comfy and fun to drive. You can test drive a Ford Focus at your Sheridan County Ford dealer. Sides and Milburn Ford in Rushville. When it comes to your land, it pays to be smart. At New Holland, smart means giving you a wide range of options to fit your needs, like smooth cutting, plug free conditioning, and versatility. Smart means putting more hay in the bale and leaving less in the field. It also means providing exceptional after-sale support and growing a legacy that goes far beyond equipment. That's New Holland Smart. Visit your local New Holland dealer.
Great Plains Communications. GPC-TV is proud to announce our brand new weather feature on Channel 2. It is now your 20... 24-7 location for current, local, and national weather using advanced satellite imaging. From today's temperature to the full five-day forecast, GPC-TV has you covered. We will continue to air local sports in your favorite Husker programs. The other providers simply can't compete. When you need weather now, you need GPC-TV on Channel 2. Well, as we announced last night, we do have a new partner, as you'll notice, along on our broadcast here the rest of the way through this basketball season. We're proud to announce that Great Plains Communications is going to start picking up replays of these basketball games uh, that we air here on Sheridan County Journal Star.net, and they'll be replaying those. Uh, the first game started last night, uh, 7 o'clock each night. Uh, from now through Wednesday, the 21st of January, you'll be able to watch the Hay Springs Hawks versus the Banner County Wildcats. And that is on Great Plains Communications Channel 2 every night from now through Wednesday at 7 p.m. So tune in if you missed it before and watch Hay Springs and the Banner County Wildcats. Seven o'clock on Channel Two, Great Plains Communications. Just under five and a half minutes left in the pregame festivities here. We'll step aside one last time and be back ready for the national anthem and the introductions of the starting lineups.
So we are just about ready to get things underway here from Potter between the Hay Springs Hawks and the Potter Dix Coyotes. Glad to have you along with us for Sheridan County Journal Star.net coverage of Hay Springs Hawk Basketball 2015. We'll turn it over to the public address announcer for the introductions of the starting lineups and the national anthem. Now, if this national anthem is a copyrighted piece, we will have to mute that briefly as we don't want any uh, pop-ups showing up on your broadcast, but uh, assure you that we will remember to get that audio turned back on for you here momentarily. the starting lineups and we are just about ready to get things underway here between the Hay Springs Hawks and the Potter Dix Coyotes. Glad to have you along with us here this afternoon ready for some great basketball action. Hay Springs comes into today's game with a record of four and six and the Coyotes at eight and two. Again run through those starters one more time for the Hawks. Jen Sherbarth, Kate Roberts, Emma Roberts, Whitney Hiding, and Tana Badge and for the Coyotes Dawson Sharman, Brooke Glass, Anna McLaughlin, Savannah Shaw, and Alexis Roselle. It will be McLaughlin and Kate Roberts to jump it up and get things underway. And away we go. The tip is controlled by Whitney Hiding for the Hawks, and they set it up for their first shot on offense here this afternoon. Hiding guarded very closely. She gets it to Emma Roberts. She finds Badge in the corner. Badge drives baseline. In the lane, too far under the basket, not much she could do there, and that's pulled away by Roselle. She gets it ahead to Sharman, and she'll set it up. Finds Roselle, free throw line, now in the corner. That is Glass. Glass goes inside for McLaughlin. Her shot no good, and the rebound pulled down by Savannah Shaw. Back in the corner for Roselle. Now the top of the key, that's Sharman. Sharman on the wing for Glass. Glass looks it over. Hay Springs. In the man-to-man -man defense here to start things out here this afternoon. Roselle on the wing for McLaughlin. Drives to the baseline. Little runner up and good as Anna McLaughlin scores two for the Coyotes. And they now lead it 
two to zero with seven minutes to go in the first quarter. The Mustangs get it across against the pressure. Kate Roberts puts the shot up. That's no good. Rebounded by Roselle for the Coyotes. And here comes Potter Dix back the other way. Glass, or Sharman, excuse me. Sharman working up top between the circles. Now she finds Roselle on the left wing. Roselle looks. Now she finds McLaughlin. They swing it around to Sharman. Sharman works it inside for Roselle. High off the glass. Glass won't go. Rebound by Hiding. Gets it out to Badge. And Badge is going to be called for the double dribble. She wanted to go ahead down the court to Emma Roberts, but could see that pass was in danger of being intercepted. And in the process, she ended up double dribbling. So 6.25 to go first quarter. It's a 2-0 Potter Dix lead. Shaw works. Now she'll get it up top. That is Glass. Glass in the corner for Sharman. Sharman drives in. Shot won't go. Gets her own rebound. The putback won't go, but she is fouled, and that'll send Dawson Sharman to the line for two free throws. 6-12 to go first quarter. They're going to call that foul on Tana Badge. That is her first and the first team foul for the Hay Springs Hawks. So Sharman with two free throws lines up the first one. And it is good. Makes it 3-0. to 6-12 to go first quarter. Again, close quarters here uh, for our video crew here in Potter. We'll do the best we can to get you some good video as there's an offensive rebound by Roselle. They'll get it back to her. She drives in, uses the left hand, and we're going to have a blocking foul called on the shot and two free throws now for Alexis Roselle. And they're gonna, they're, they are going to call that foul on. They haven't put it up on the scoreboard yet. So that'll be the second. My young cameraman, Jesse Badge, informs me that uh, that is now the second foul on Tana Badge here early going of the first quarter. Second free throw is also good. And that shot up and good by Kate Roberts. Gets the Hawks back within two. <laughs> Trying to keep the score sheet up to date here so we can have some accurate stats for you. So now into the game for the Coyotes comes number 34. That's Audrey Julefs. She is a five foot nine inch freshman. And she wears the mask, if you can see that on your screen. She's got a clear face mask to protect her, uh, protect her nose and upper part of her face. That one's tipped out of bounds, and it'll go back over to the Hay Springs Hawks with 5.46 to go. Hay Springs trails at 4-2. to two. They'll get it to Emma Roberts. And Emma in danger of double dribbling again. Instead, it's taken away by Roselle. Two on one. Roselle across to Julefs. Shot up and good. Audrey Julefs converts. Julefs converts. On the easy layup, makes it 6-2 to two with 5.30 to go in the first quarter. Hawks struggling against this pressure. Whitney Hiding brings it across, gets it ahead to Kate Roberts. Pull-up jumper. That one's off the mark, no good. And they're going to get Jen Sherbarth for coming over the back. First foul on Jen Sherbarth of the afternoon. That is the third team foul now for the Hay Springs Hawks. So Trinity Langley now into the game. She takes the place of McLaughlin. And Dawson Sharman back into the game as well after a short breather on the bench. So Julius brings it up the court and sets it up for the Coyotes. They lead it 6-2 to two with 5.15 to go in the first quarter. Sharman drives to the free throw line. Good look inside that time. As she had Roselle cut into the basket. And they're going to say no... Now they're going to they're going to call that a foul on Trinity Langley for Potter Dix. So it's a turnover. Hay Springs with the ball. They go inside for Kate Roberts, and we're going to get a blocking foul on the Coyotes. Going to call that foul on Sharman. That is her first. And we got to be quick picking up the fouls because uh, as they put those up on the scoreboard, they don't leave them like a lot of places do. They put it up for a brief period of time and then they 
pull it right back down again. There's a shot rebounded by Julefs, and then off of the foot of Sidney Jancic, who's now come into the game, and it'll go back over to the Coyotes. 4.58 to go, 6-2. to two. Potter Dix with the early lead here in the first quarter. Julefs gets it to Roselle on the right wing. Roselle works against Emma Roberts. They go inside for Shaw off the glass, and good, two points for Savannah Shaw. It's now 8-2 to two as Emma Roberts hits the deck, turns it over, and it'll be Potter Dix basketball, 4.41 to go first quarter. McLaughlin in, and Roselle comes out of the game for a breather. Jancic to inbound the basketball. Gets it into Hiding. Hiding looks ahead for Kate Roberts behind the defense. She has it stolen away, poked out of there by Julius. Julius lobby in her case, trying to get the ball back, but not going to happen. It'll be Hay Springs basketball with 4.37 to go in the first quarter. Jancic again to inbound it for Hay Springs. She gets it into Hiding. Hiding in the corner. She works against Sharman. Now she'll find Emma Roberts. She drives into the paint, tries to get it to Jancic, but that's taken away by Julif. She finds Shaw. She nearly has it taken away. Sharman inside, and that one is stolen away by Kate Roberts. They were trying to find McLaughlin under the basket. Here come the Hawks. Hiding finds Jancic on the wing. She makes a good quick, quick move to the basket, and they're going to get Julifs for the foul that time on the reach in. That is her first. And that is three team fouls now on Potter Dix. Shaw comes to the bench now for the Coyotes, and into the game again is Brooke Glass. Sharp angle here. We'll try and get you the best the best view that we can, but we're limited by what we have to work with. The Hawks get the ball in. Emma Roberts probably traveled there, but no call. Roberts across to Hiding. Hiding on the left wing, has it poked away by Sharman. Now she all, goes all the way around, and she's going to get the blocking foul. And this one may be the second foul on Julefs. We'll see who they call this on. They do. That is Julefs' second foul, and now the fourth team foul of the game on Potter Dix. So Langley comes out, Shaw back in. Now Julefs out as well for the Coyotes. Liberal substitutions for Potter Dix as we're now under four minutes to go in the first quarter, and it's an 8-2 Potter Dix Coyote lead. Kate Roberts can't convert on the inbounds play. Rebounded by the Coyotes, and here they come. Sharman ahead to Shaw, skips it across for Roselle. She wasn't ready for the pass, but she tracks it down. She works against Emma Roberts. Roselle into the high post, leaves it outside for McLaughlin. Now on the wing. Now back up to McLaughlin at the top of the key. Shaw on the wing. Now Roselle, top of the key. They'll swing it around into the corner. That's Glass. Glass finds Roselle into the paint. Shot up short off the front of the rim. Rebound by Kate Roberts. Gets it to Whitney Hiding. 3.25 to go. Hiding quickly ahead to Jancic. Jancic into the lane. Shot might have been partially blocked. They're going to say no. Out of bounds. And it'll be Potter Dix basketball. 3.19 to go and an 8-2 lead. And now we've got a timeout called on the floor. 3.15 to go in the first quarter, 30-second timeout. Potter Dix leads this one 8-2. Security First Bank of Hay Springs is your hometown bank. They're FDIC insured and an equal opportunity lender, and they proudly support the Hawks. Security First Bank, a relationship you can count on. And the Sand Hill State Bank in Hay Springs is proud to support the Hawks. Locally owned, locally focused, Sand Hills State Bank, the most committed brand in banking. Sandhillstate.com, member FDIC. 3.15 to go in the first quarter, and Potter Dix leads this one 8-2. Four team fouls on the Coyotes, three team fouls for the Hawks. Sharman works it right side as now the Hawks switch to a 2-3 zone. Trying to change things up a little bit. Sharman on the wing, finds Shaw up top. They go high post for Roselle, nearly had it taken away. Good deny that time by Jen Sherbarth. Knocks it away, we've got a tie up on the floor. And the possession arrow in favor of Potter Dix as we're now under three to go in eight to two. On the is kick. 
Okay, that. And makes it 10. 44. Now. Up. As Emma Roberts on drive, they're going to on Alexis. This is her first, and that is now five team fouls on the Coyotes. Emma Roberts to inbound it, gets it in, but that that's taken away by McLaughlin, and here comes the other way, poked away by Hiding. Look, McLaughlin tracks it down in the corner. Roselle into the lane, jumper. That one's short, no good, but there's Glass with the rebound and the putback for two more. It's 12 to two with 2.05 to go. That inbounds pass is stolen away, but taken right back as now we've got a two on two. Whitney Hiding all the way in, lays it up and good. Whitney Hiding taking charge all the way in and lays it in for two points. It's now 12 to four in favor of the Coyotes. Sharman into the free throw line, jumper off no good and the rebound by Whitney Hiding comes out of it comes out of there with it, hiding back the other way, crosses the timeline, and finds Jen Sherbarth on the left wing. Sherbarth drives in, free throw line jumper by Sherbarth is good! Jen Sherbarth knocks that one down for two. Jen, not normally a real offensive-minded player, but she puts it on the floor with a nice drive that time, and now we've got a steal by Sydney Jancic. Coming up the floor with the left hand, she's gonna pull it back, not real comfortable with that left hand. Emma Roberts, baseline jumper. That one falls off no good, rebounded by Shaw. And we have one minute left to go in this first quarter. It's a 12 to six lead for Potter Dix. Shaw skips it across right between Glass and Sharman. Couldn't decide who was gonna get it. It sails out of bounds. It'll be Hay Springs Hawk basketball with 57 seconds left to go in the first quarter. More full court pressure. It's been this way the whole way. Emma Roberts gets it. She gets it to Jancic. Now ahead to Whitney Hiding. Hiding switches hands, drives into the lane. Left-handed layup is good. Nice move that time by Whitney Hiding. She's got four on the afternoon. And the lead is cut to four. 12 to eight with 40 seconds to go. Shaw, that shot misses everything. There's Jen Sherbarth trying to get the rebound. Instead, it is Paige Hoffman into the game now for Potter Dix that gets the rebound. Shaw, she loses it. That's picked up by Emma Roberts with 26 to go. She has it stolen away by Roselle. Now back to Shaw. 20 seconds left to go first quarter. Back to Shaw on the wing. Skips it across to Sharman. Three-pointer. That one is off the mark. No good. And out of bounds. It'll be Hay Springs basketball with 9.8 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Now into the game comes Courtney Lewis. The 5'8 junior. She'll replace... Uh, McLaughlin in the lineup for Potter Dix. 9.8 seconds left to go, so the Hawks need to work quickly here. They get it into Kate Roberts. Now ahead to Sydney Jancic. Under seven, they find Kate Roberts. Kate has it slapped away. Roselle from the half court line at the buzzer. That's no good. And at the end of the first quarter, it's Potter Dix 12 and the Hay Springs Hawks 8 here on the Sheridan County Journal Star.net Sports Network. This is the 2013 Ford Explorer that I bought from Sides and Milburn Ford in Rushville, and it is awesome. It has the sync system and my Ford Touch that allows me to control everything with ease. Climate control, navigation, entertainment, I can even connect my smartphone for hands-free dialing. The all-wheel drive feature of the Ford Explorer might be what I like the best. This is the most sure-footed vehicle I have ever owned, and it is terrific on snow and ice, which I really love this time of year. Stop in and check out a Ford Explorer today at Sides and Milburn Ford in Rushville. Tim Marlatt and Brian Felker at Physical Therapy West and Gordon have over 30 years of combined experience in providing physical therapy and sports medicine services. Contact PT West for care following injuries, sprains, fractures, or treatment of joint, muscle, and back pain. PT West provides individualized rehabilitation following joint replacement, surgery, or stroke. Don't suffer. Don't live with pain. 
can get back to the activities you enjoy. Call PT West at 308-282-0203 or stop by with questions at 100 South Main in Gordon. Ready for second quarter basketball action. We are underway. Whitney Hiding takes the inbounds pass and the Hawks ready to set this one up here. Emma Roberts in the corner. Looks like the Coyotes have switched to a bit of a zone defense now. They get the takeaway and they get the turnover. And it'll be Potter Dick's basketball. Just underway in the second quarter. Rizelle inbounds it to Sharman. She'll bring it up the floor for the Coyotes. Now 2-3 zone by the Hawks. So both teams trying to change things up. McLaughlin, she goes back up top. That's Shaw. Shaw looks. Now she finds Glass. She goes down low for Roselle. Roselle muscle her way across the baseline. Can't get that shot to go. It's pulled down by Whitney Hiding, and back the other way comes Hay Springs. 7.20 to go, second quarter. Hiding all the way in, dribbled it off somebody's foot, gets it outside. Emma Roberts shot up. It's good. Emma Roberts, the young freshman, knocks it down for two. Her first points of the afternoon. It's a two-point ball game with 7.05 to go. There's a steal by Sydney Jancic. Jancic all the way in, shot up, rolls off no good. There's Whitney Hiding. Jancic with another shot, and she's fouled. Sydney Jancic heading to the line with a chance to tie this one up. No, they're going to say it's on the floor. She won't have free throws. They're going to give that foul to Brooke Glass. That is her first. They're going to say she was pushed. The push was on the floor. Now we've got four fresh Coyotes coming into the game. We'll try and keep track of all of these substitutions. That is Langley, Lewis, Juliffs. Mm, try to see who else we've got here. And Hoffman into the game. They go in, get it into Kate Roberts. Back in the corner for Sydney Jancic. Now she finds hiding. Back inside for Kate Roberts. Her shot and is no good, but she'll head to the free throw line. Kate Roberts is fouled on the shot. They're going to call that foul on Courtney Lewis. That is her first. And it'll put Kate Roberts at the line for a pair of free throws with 6.51 to go here in the second quarter. 12 to 10, Coyote, or, uh, Coyote lead. Make that 12 to 11 as Kate Roberts knocks the first one down. She's got three points on the afternoon. And a chance to tie it up at 12 here. Seven team fouls now for the Coyotes, and that'll put the Hawks into the one-on-one -on -one bonus the rest of the first half here. Kate Roberts' second free throw misses everything, and that'll go back over to the Coyotes with 6.51 to go in the second quarter. It's back to a one-point ball game at 12-11. to So Hay Springs battling back. Hanging around here as we work our way into the mid part of the second quarter. Hoffman, now they go quickly inside to Lewis. She can't handle it, and it's taken away by the Hawks. They get it ahead to Whitney Hiding. She brings it up the floor. Now she'll kick it out for Emma Roberts. Emma Roberts drives the free throw line, and she traveled with it. As compared to last night's officiating crew, these guys a lot more lenient on the travel. All the player had to do was look at the floor last night to get a traveling call, and... Uh, they called it that way for both teams, and that's perfectly fine, but uh, certainly a big difference in the way that they call these games. That one tipped out of bounds off of Whitney Hiding, and it'll stay with the Coyotes with 6.17 to go. It's 12-11, to 11, Potter Dix. They'll get it in to Julefs. As Hoffman hits the four, she gets up and they'll reset. Julefs with a long three-pointer. That one's no good. Long rebound pulled down by Kate Roberts. And she'll find Sydney Jancic with 6.05 to go. She gets it ahead to Emma Roberts. Emma, awkward shot. That one's up no good. Kate Roberts saves it back in. Whitney hiding off of the save. Can't get it to go, but we've got Emma Roberts on the rebound and the putback, but they're going to say she was pushed before the shot. And another Potter Dix foul. They're going to give that foul to Trinity Langley. That is her second. And now the Hawks into the one and one. That'll put young Emma Roberts at the line for the chance at some free throws, chance to tie this or even take the lead. They trail at 12 to 11 with 5.57 to go in the second quarter. Emma Roberts eyes it. First free throw in and out, no good, but there's Kate Roberts. Her putback is too strong. There's Tana Badge, and she's fouled on the shot. I believe we're going to get Sharman with her second foul, and we do. Sharman's Char second foul, and that puts Tana Badge at the line. She has yet to score here this afternoon. The five foot nine inch sophomore will have a one and on one and one opportunity here. First free throw, that one 
is off the mark, no good. They're going to say she was in the act of shooting. She's got two free throws. So Badge will have one more. Chance for the Hawks to tie it up. And that one's short off the front of the rim and rebounded by Potter Dix. Juliffs to bring it up the floor now. 5.48 to go in the second quarter. Sharman up top for Juliffs. Back to Sharman on the wing. Hawks back into that zone defense now. Now they got Hoffman trapped, hiding, giving her a devil of a time out there, and Hoffman going to lose it out of bounds. Called for traveling, and they'll turn it over to the Hay Springs Hawks. Now we've got four starters coming back into the game here, or four fresh bodies anyway. Not sure they're all starters. And back to business we are. 5.32 to go in the first half. That one nearly stolen away by Juliffs. Hiding down on the baseline for Badge. They look inside for Kate Roberts. It's tipped out of bounds. And that is Roselle that tipped it out of bounds. It'll stay with the Hawks. 5.22 to go, second quarter, 12 to 11. It's a one-point game in favor of the Coyotes. Tana Badge gets it on the wing. Emma Roberts flips it out to Jancic. Roberts works it inside for Kate Roberts. Can't get that one to go. Ball tipped around. Finally going to be corralled by Roselle, and they're going to get Tana Badge for the blocking foul. An unwise choice that time, and Tana Badge just picked up her third personal foul. Well, now they're going to say that's her. Now they've got it listed as her second. We've got, we're out of whack on our fouls here somehow. But we'll get it straightened out maybe at halftime. No, she does have three. Okay. They just didn't put it up on the scoreboard correctly for us. So nine team fouls now for Potter Dix, four for the Hawks. There's a steal, takeaway, poked out of there by Jancic. Now she's got glass tied up and gets the tie up. Jump ball, but the possession arrow in favor of Potter Dix. So good defensive work that time by Sydney Jancic. As she poked that one away, but couldn't quite get back to it. Shaw. Nearly another steal by Jancic out there. Now Juliff's in the corner, finds Roselle inside. That shot won't go, rebounded by Kate Roberts. Gets it to Whitney Hiding, and with 4.35 to go, Hawks with a chance to take the lead here. Jen Sherbarth in the corner. It's Jancic to Hiding, Hiding drives in. Gets herself hung up, and she traveled. She drove into the lane, but then didn't have anywhere to go with that ball and ended up traveling with it. 4.26 to go in the first half. It's a 12-11 Potter Dix lead. And Sharman now set to come back into the game for Potter Dix at the next whistle. Glass on the wing. Up top for Roselle. They swing it around to Shaw. Now in the corner for Julius. Three-pointer on the way. And that one's no good as Jen Sherbarth hits the floor. Now Shaw, good head fake, drives into the lane. That one's no good, and we've got a foul on Potter Dix, we're going to have free throws at the other end as Roselle just picked up her second foul. So Sharman comes in, Glass goes out. And let's see who we've got at the free throw line. I think they're going to decide that it is Jen Sherbarth up there to take the free throws here. So the Hawks have been close. It's been a one-point game for quite a bit here of the second quarter. They can't quite get over the edge. Jen Sherbarth misses the first as we are in the double bonus now. Misses the first, so the Hawks not shooting well from the free throw line. One for about seven so far here in the first half. And that one also is missed. Four minutes left to go and a 12 to 11 Coyote lead. That one nearly stolen away but tipped out of bounds and it'll stay with the Coyotes. Roselle gets it in to Juliffs, and they'll set it up. On the wing for Shaw. And somehow McLaughlin keeps from traveling as she gathered that ball in, and we're going to have a blocking foul now called on one of the Hawks. Let's see who they're going to give this one to. They're going to give that to Emma Roberts, and that is her first. Five team fouls now on the Hay Springs Hawks. 3.41 to go in the first half. They get it into McLaughlin. She finds Roselle, and she can't convert, but Shaw comes out of there with the rebound, and the Coyotes will reset. 
on the wing for Julefs. Works it inside for McLaughlin. Her shot in the paint is up and good. Anna McLaughlin with six points here in the first half. Now more of that pressure. Emma Roberts tries to get it ahead to Kate Roberts. That's picked off by McLaughlin. Ahead to Shaw. Shaw traveled with it, though. And they'll turn it right back over to the Hay Springs Hawks. 3.17 to go now in the second quarter. It's a 14 to 11 lead. Potter Dix by three. Hiding ahead to Jancic as they get this set up and ready to go. Hiding again. She'll use the left hand drive in. Skip it across for Jen Sherbarth. Now back up top for Sydney Jancic. Jancic puts it on the floor, leaves it for Sherbarth. Sherbarth wanting to go inside. She's trapped. Gets it out to, Jan or to Hiding. Free throw line jumper for Emma Roberts. Rolls off. No good. Rebounded by Shaw for Potter Dix. Julius brings it up the floor. Crosses the timeline. Gets it ahead to Sharman. She tries to go inside for Roselle. Scramble on the floor, tie up, and that'll be Hay Springs Hawks basketball. Bodies all over the floor. Whitney Hiding comes up shaking a left arm. Not sure if she dinged an elbow on the floor or what. She's not, not feeling a not feeling a hundred percent right at the moment. 240 to go here in the second quarter. Hiding trying to get that pain to subside just a little bit. It's a three-point lead, and Potter Dix actually going to help her out as Roselle comes out of the game. She's replaced by Courtney Lewis and buys just a little bit more time for Whitney Hiding, still holding that left elbow. Hiding takes the inbounds pass. She finds Emma Roberts. Emma Roberts finds Kate Roberts. Has Jen Sherbarth down low, and Sherbarth can't convert. Sherbarth had the easy layup there, couldn't get it to go, and we've got another tie-up on the floor. This one's going the Coyotes' direction, though. 2.29 to go, second quarter, and it's 14 to 11. Hotly contested game. Very close. Hay Springs doing a great job of hanging in there. Potter Dex comes into this game with a record of 8 and 2. Hay Springs just 4 and 6, but they're playing a lot better than that record would indicate here today. Shaw's pull up jumper falls off no good and rebounded there by Sharman. Her shot won't go. And the rebound and the putback by Lewis that time does go. And the lead is now back to five at 16 to 11 as we approach the two minute mark. Hiding trapped as she crosses half court. And we've got a timeout called. Hay Springs coach April Stengel, not sure that Hiding was going to get out of that trap, calls a quick 30 second timeout to make sure they maintain the possession. 2.03 to go, second quarter, 16 to 11. Potter Dix with the lead. Say thanks to today's sponsors. Um, we have a lot of folks that uh, watch these broadcasts from a long ways away, and you don't necessarily need to be a customer of these businesses to let them know that you appreciate it. And we've had several grandparents, uh, in fact, was informed just last night that uh, even though they can't do business with these businesses, uh, they've sent thank yous to them, letting them know that they really appreciate their sponsorship. And let me tell you, that means an awful lot to those folks sponsoring these broadcasts. So make sure that you, uh, that you let them know. It doesn't take much, but just let them know that, uh, that you appreciate them making it possible for us to bring these broadcasts to you. Back to basketball action, two minutes left to go in the second quarter. Emma Roberts puts it on the floor from the elbow. That's no good. There's Sidney Jancic with the rebound and the putback. That won't go. And Roselle gets the rebound, flips it ahead to McLaughlin. McLaughlin accelerates, and as she goes by, Whitney Hiding reaches in and draws the foul. That's the first on Hiding. And so it'll be Potter Dix basketball out of bounds with 1.49 to go in the first half. She'll flip it out to Shaw. Shaw sets it up, and the Hawks back into that zone defense again. Shaw dribbles. Now she tries to go down low for Julius. That one's tipped out of there as Julius made an ill-advised pass. Ball on the floor, out of bounds. Hay Springs Hawks basketball. Last touched by the Coyotes. 1.34 to go, second quarter, 16 to 11. It's a five-point Coyote lead. Jancic to hiding on the wing. Roberts in the corner. Emma Roberts, that is. She goes down low for Kate Roberts and another tie-up. Held ball, alternating possession. This one goes to the Hawks. In the corner for hiding. Three-pointer is good. Whitney hiding for three. 
She's got seven points in the first half, and that was a big three-pointer. It pulls the Hawks back within two as we approach the one-minute mark. Shaw drives baseline. Shot blocked by Hiding. She comes out of there with it and brings it up the floor. Hawks back on offense. Chance to tie it again. They trail by two. Jancic back across for Hiding. Now skips it to Jancic. On the wing for Sherbarth. Sherbarth up top for Hiding. Now they find Jancic on the left wing. Emma Roberts tries to go down low, and that pass is taken away by McLaughlin. And as she does, Kate Roberts reaches in and commits the foul. That is Kate Roberts first. That puts, that puts the Coyotes into the one-on-one -on -one bonus. And so McLaughlin will head to the line for a one and one opportunity. She's got six points on the afternoon so far. So the Hawks just one for seven from the free throw line this afternoon. And the Coyotes are three for five. That one in and out no good. Hiding is really struggling. There's a rebound and a putback. I think that was Roselle on the putback. Hiding really favoring that left arm. She's having a lot of trouble, a lot of contact as she went for that last rebound. Here's Jen Sherboss. She has her shot blocked by Roselle. It'll be out of bounds. Hay Springs basketball with 31 seconds left to go. They trail it now 18 to 14. But the big story is uh, Whitney Hiding dealing with that. Uh, Sore arm, we'll see how she deals with that as we head through the remainder of this game. Emma Roberts kicks it out for hiding and they're gonna say that Emma traveled with it. 24 seconds left in the first half, 18 to 14 is the Potter Dix Coyote lead. Julifs, the freshman, brings it across the timeline and sets it up with 20 seconds to go on the wing for Shaw. Shaw looks, finds Roselle at the top of the key. There's Whitney hiding with the steal, with the left hand, down the floor, lays it up, and good! Whitney hiding with two more. She's got nine on the afternoon, five seconds left. Julifs with the long three-pointer at the buzzer. That was close, but didn't quite get it to go. And so at the half, the Hawks come back. They trailed by four at the end of the first quarter. They trail by just two at the half. We've got us a good game here this afternoon, folks. 18 to 16, Potter Dix leads Hay Springs at the half here on Sheridan County Journal Star.net coverage of Hay Springs Hawks basketball 2015. Great Plains Communications. Great Plains Communications values its Nebraska roots. For four generations, Valley-owned Great Plains Communications has provided local service in Nebraska. For more than 100 years, our technicians have lived and worked in the communities we serve. Local service, Nebraska-owned. Great Plains Communications. Great Plains Communications. Welcome home. New Holland has equipped farmers with the right technology for over a century and continues to provide smart innovations like our exclusive corn rower attachment for our CR Series Combine. We make certain you have all the tools to grow your bottom line while improving efficiency and productivity, allowing you to work smarter in order to spend more time with the ones you love. That's New Holland Smart. Visit your local New Holland dealer today. So we are back at halftime here from Potter Dix High School. And it is the Potter Dix Coyotes leading the Hay Springs Hawks 18 to 16 at the half. Let's take a look at some scoring totals from the first half unofficially, of course. Whitney Hiding leading the way for the Hawks with nine points, picking up where she left off last night after dropping in uh, 21 against the Mustangs in the losing effort last night. Whitney Hiding with nine. Kate Roberts has three. Jan Sherbarth with two, and Emma Roberts also with two. That rounds out the scoring for the Hay Springs Hawks. For the Potter Dix Coyotes, Anna McLaughlin leads the way. She's got six points. Alexis Roselle has four. Brooke Glass, Audrey Julifs, and Courtney Lewis each with two, and Dawson Sharman with one. Let's take a look at fouls. 
for the Hawks. Tana Badge has three fouls. Whitney Hiding with one. Emma Roberts, Kate Roberts, and Jen Sherbarth also with one. So just the one player for Hay Springs with three fouls. Everybody else with one. For the Coyotes, several players with two fouls apiece. Audrey Julius, Alexis Roselle, Trinity Langley, and Dawson Sharman all with two fouls apiece. Brooke Glass with one. And Courtney Lewis also with one. Seven minutes and 30 seconds left in the halftime break. It is Potter Dix 18 and Hay Springs 16. Tim Marlatt and Brian Felker at Physical Therapy West and Gordon have over 30 years of combined experience in providing physical therapy and sports medicine services. Contact PT West for care following injuries, sprains, fractures, or treatment of joint, muscle, and back pain. PT West provides individualized rehabilitation following joint replacement, surgery, or stroke. Don't suffer, don't live with pain, and get back to the activities you enjoy. Call PT West at 308-282-0203 or stop by with questions at 100 South Main in Gordon. Sides in Milburn Ford in Rushville is your Sheridan County Ford dealer. They have an excellent service department that works on all makes and models. So why would you drive hours to buy a car from someone you will never see again when you can do business locally with a dealer who will stand behind their product and has the service department to back it up? Sides and Milburn Ford will help you find the right vehicle, and they will do it with the personal touch that only your hometown dealer can provide. Stop in at Sides and Milburn Ford in Rushville. They're the people you can trust. It's not a good setup. Oh, Hay Springs, Hay Springs. Yeah, I'm thinking. Um, I'm, yeah, we do both. We do both places. We do Gordon Rushville and we do Hay Springs both. Yes, Hay Springs. Um, Hay Springs. We do it up in the stands as well. That would be the would be the east side. Yeah, they people it make some neat shots from up there above. My apologies, hot mic and visiting here, and we'll shut that off and. Won't make you suffer through our halftime uh, discussions here. Halftime here between Hay Springs and Potter Dix. 5.08 left to go in the halftime break. It's Potter Dix 18 and Hay Springs 16.
So 3.05 left to go in the halftime break. Potter Dix 18 and Hay Springs 16. We'll run down through the unofficial scoring totals again for you real quick. For the Hawks, Whitney Hiding leading the way with nine. Kate Roberts with three. Jen Sherbarth and Emma Roberts each with two points apiece. Free throws, the Hawks shooting a dismal one for, I believe it's seven. Yes, the Hawks one for seven is all from the free throw line in the first half. This is a whole different ball game if they make a few free throws. As it is, they're only down by two. For the Potter Dix Coyotes, leading scorer Anna McLaughlin, she's got six. Alexis Roselle has four. Courtney Lewis, Audrey Julifs, Savannah Shaw, and Brooke Glass each with two points, and Dawson Sharman with one. And from the line for the Coyotes, let's count them up real fast. They are three for five from the free throw line in the first half. So 144 left to go in the halftime break. Just enough time to run to the kitchen and grab a drink from the refrigerator and a snack from the cabinet and be back in front of the computer screen in time to catch the start of the second half. Uh, to open it up, it will be Coyote basketball to open the second half to get things rolling. We'll step aside one last time and remind you that uh, sponsors for tonight's game, Pioneer Manor, Security First Bank of Hay Springs, and the Sand Hills State Bank. Pioneer Manor is a premier skilled nursing and assisted living facility located in Hay Springs. We provide rehabilitation services and around-the-clock skilled care in a comfortable and friendly environment. At Pioneer Manor, our guiding principle is to provide outstanding and innovative health care in an environment that remembers the importance of the individual, and the family. Our staff of dedicated professionals embodies the values that we cherish most, a nurturing spirit and a commitment to quality. Security First Bank of Hay Springs is your hometown bank, proudly supporting the Hawks, their FDIC insured, and an equal opportunity lender. Security First Bank, a relationship you can count on. And the Sand Hill State Bank in Hay Springs is proud to support the Hawks. Locally owned, locally focused, Sand Hill State Bank, the most committed brand in banking. SandHillState.com, member FDIC. We are just about ready for second half basketball action. We'll update the scoreboard here and be ready to go. I am Clint Anderson, glad to bring you today's broadcast. And our young cameraman this afternoon is Jesse Badge doing a great job getting you some video footage from here at Potter Dix High School. We are underway in the second half and ready to go. Shaw drives in, tips it around, and that's taken away. Whitney Hiding picks it up and back the other way. Hiding looking a lot better after she dinged her elbow, I think, on the on the floor in the first half. Emma Roberts in the corner, now she'll go back up top for Jancic. Around to Hiding. Hiding kicks it out for Jen Sherbarth, now she finds Jancic top of the key. Into Emma Roberts, Emma Roberts, that's partially blocked, and we're gonna get Kate Roberts on the foul. Kate Roberts laughing that one off, she got herself in a position she didn't wanna be in, couldn't get herself out of it, she draws the foul with 7.27 to go in the third quarter, and the Potter Dix Coyotes leading 18 to 16. Kate Roberts with her second personal of the afternoon there. Shaw brings in the pass, now she gets it up top for Glass, swings it around, that's Sharman on the wing. Sharman dribbles to her right, she finds Shaw into the paint, that's McLaughlin, one dribble, puts it up, long rebound comes down, and we got a tie up on the floor, and that'll be Hay Springs Hawk basketball on the alternating possession with 7.05 to go in the third quarter. And the Coyotes have pressured the Hawks the whole way with full court pressure. They get it ahead to Jen Sherbarth. She gets it across, she finds Kate Roberts, layup, in and out, no good. There's Roberts, and she's gonna be fouled by Shaw on the putback. Kate Roberts missed an easy one there. She'd love to have that one back. 
They're going to give that foul to Savannah Shaw. That is her first and one team foul apiece on each team here in the second half. Kate Roberts now with two free throws. She's one for two from the line here this afternoon. First free throw, free throw is off. No good. And she's got one more coming. As now Trinity Langley into the game. She'll replace McLaughlin. So the Hawks now one for eight from the free throw line. And she gets that one to fall. And we got a one-point ball game, 18 to 17. We're under seven minutes to go in the third quarter. That one's kicked by Sydney Jancic, and it'll go back over to the Coyotes. Ready to inbound it. Sharman has it, and she'll set it up. Sharman tries to drive in. Now she'll swing it across to Shaw. Into the paint, now back outside. That's Sharman, and her two-pointer is good. Dawson Sharman, she's got three on the afternoon, makes it a three-point game at 20-17. to 17. Hiding ahead to Emma Roberts. Emma Roberts drives into the lane. She carried it. She saw an opening, tried to head for the lane, and as she did, she carried that ball just a little bit too much and turns it over back to Potter Dix 631 to go third quarter it's 20 to 17. Potter Dix by three Shaw on the left wing Hawks back into that two three zone now Roselle put it on the floor it's finally gathered back up now slapped around out of bounds tipped out by Emma Roberts and the Coyotes maintain control Trinity Langley now to inbound it for Potter Dix Langley over the top finds Shaw. Thought about the three-pointer pull-up jumper by Shaw. That one's off the mark, no good. There's Glass. Her shot goes off the side of the backboard, and it's pulled down by Roselle. They'll get it back out to Shaw. Now on the wing, now back up to Shaw. Swing it around to Glass. Glass pull-up jumper. That one's off the mark, no good. And that's going to be tipped out of bounds. They're going to say off of Emma Roberts. She and Langley doing battle there for that rebound. Shaw heads to the bench. Julius and McLaughlin back in now as uh, Emma Roberts heads to the bench and Tana Badge back in for the Hawks. Sharman dribbles in. Now she'll kick it back out. Roselle skips it all the way across. Julius shot. That one misses everything. And it's pulled down by Kate Roberts. Gets it to hiding and she'll bring it up with 5.45 to go in the third quarter. Jen Sherbarth pull up jumper from the left elbow. High arcing shot. Won't go. It comes up short. And Julius with the rebound. Julius brings it across the timeline. On the wing for Sharman, now back to Julius. Julius one dribble, now back to Sharman. Skips it inside, nearly taken away. Now we've got McLaughlin with the double dribble call. She turns it over, Hay Springs basketball with 5.27 to go in the third quarter. It is a three point Coyote lead. They've led the whole way. Hay Springs has kept it close. They've got almost to the point of being able to tie this up a couple of times as Roselle going for the steal, a collision, but no foul called. Out of bounds off Roselle, and it'll stay with the Hawks with 5.21 to go in the third quarter. They get it into Sherbarth. Free throw line now out to Tana Badge. Badge loses the handle out of bounds after the collision, and it's going to go back over to Potter Dix. Shaw back into the game now, and Glass will head to the bench for a breather. 5.16 to go third quarter. 20 to 17 is the three-point lead for Potter Dix. Julius brings it across, works against the 2-3 zone. She finds Sharman on the wing. Now up top for Shaw. Shaw swings it around to Julius on the left wing. Back to Shaw. Now back to Sharman. Playing catch out front. Julius back to Shaw. Trying to get it inside. We're going to have a blocking foul. Tana Badge just picked up her fourth. 4.59 to go. And Emma Roberts comes in as Tana Badge comes back out. The scoreboard operator has been behind on Tana's Fouls the whole way. They're still showing three, but the scorebook has it set up at four. That shot off the inbounds pass by Julius won't go. Rebounded by Kate Roberts. So there's going to have to be a reckoning as we get down. If Tana gets another foul, we'll have to see where that goes. Now that one slapped away from Emma Roberts. Here comes Sharman back to Julius and back to Sharman. That one won't go. Rebound in the putback. And now Emma Roberts gets the rebound. And Julius going to be called for coming over the back, I believe. It is Julius, and that is her third foul. 4.38 to go third quarter, 20 to 17. Hiding gets it in to Emma Roberts. 
Emma picks up her dribble, gets it back to hiding. Emma hits the floor. That one's tipped around and taken away and recovered by Sharman. She finds Roselle. Roselle running the floor, brings it all the way in. Contact, no foul. Roselle gets the rebound, and now we're going to have McLaughlin getting called for her first foul of the afternoon. So the referee and crew letting a lot of contact go. Nothing wrong with that. They've done a good job of calling it the same way at both ends. Must, or excuse me, the Hawks do a good job of breaking the press that time as they get it across with 4.05 to go. Emma Roberts on the baseline, has that one slapped away, and it's taken away by Sharman. Another turnover by the Hawks. Julefs now has it. Here she comes, drives into the paint, pull-up jumper. That one's off the back iron, no good. Gets her own rebound, can't get that to go. Ball tipped around, tied up, and possession arrow in favor of Potter Dix. 3.47 to go, third quarter. It is 20-17. Glass comes in, she'll give Sharman a break. Still just a three-point lead for the Coyotes. Now Lewis going to come in, and she'll give Roselle a breather. Glass in the corner, nearly traveled with it. She gets it to Julefs. Julefs in the corner now. Gets it out front. Now it's Shaw. Skips it across to Julefs. Three-pointer on the way. In and out, no good. Rebounded by Jancic. Jancic to hiding. And with 3.30 to go, Hawks with a chance to tie it with a three-pointer here. Third quarter basketball action. That one's tipped out of bounds. And it'll be Hay Springs basketball. Jancic inbounds it. And we're going to get a foul called on the inbounds pass. And that is Audrey Julius. She just picked up her fourth foul. So the young freshman coming off the bench, she's just got two points, but she also has four fouls. She's provided some real quality minutes here this afternoon for Potter Dix. Jen Sherbarth traveled with it. And the Hawks turn it back over. Julius is going to have to head to the bench with those four fouls as Sharman comes in to replace her. Again, we're... Broadcasting from up on top of the stage, we got a very limited line of sight, especially along this near sideline. We apologize for that. We do the best that we can with what we've got. We enjoy bringing these basketball games to you as Glass's shot won't go. Rebounded by Whitney Hiding. She has it slapped out of bounds, and they're going to say it's off of Hiding. She <laughs> really disagrees with that call, shaking her head. She doesn't like the call at all, and it'll go back over to Potter Dix. Under three minutes to go now in the third quarter. They'll finally get that one into Shaw, and now we're going to get a push called on Sidney Jancic of the Hawks. So Jancic with her first foul of the afternoon. That is the third team foul of the second half on Hay Springs for, for the Coyotes. Up top for Glass. Now in the corner, three-pointer on the way by Sharman, and we've got a hold... I think we're going to get Emma Roberts as she's doing battle down there with Courtney Lewis. Outsized in a big way is young Emma Roberts. She picks up her second foul, trying to get position for that rebound. McLaughlin heads to the bench. Roselle back in now. A liberal substitutions by the Coyotes. They get it into Roselle, but it's taken away by Hiding. She gets it to Jen Sherbarth. Sherbarth across the timeline. Collision, ball comes loose. Shaw has it, and back the other way come the Coyotes. Three on three. She finds Glass in the corner. That shot no good. Rebound, and the putback won't go. And now a battle, and Emma Roberts just got cross-checked. She took a forearm from Glass, knocked her to the floor, but no call. And now we've got a traveling call against uh, Sharman, and that'll turn it back over to the Hawks. So a lot of, uh, a lot of contact both ways here. 2.25 to go, 20-17 to 17 is the score. Jancic works right side. Emma Roberts on the wing, puts it on the floor, drives baseline, works it inside. Kate Roberts, not a good spot. She kicks it back out. They'll swing it around. Sherbarth gets it over to Hiding. Now Hiding at the top of the key. Jancic drives baseline, puts up a little floater. That won't go. There's Emma Roberts with the rebound and the quick putback, but that won't go. 
Shaw with the rebound. And back the other way comes Potter Dix. 1.55 to go. Low scoring game here as we're under two minutes to go in the third quarter. Sharman all the way in. And we're going to get a blocking foul. And Sharman will head to the line with two free throws as Kate Roberts picks up her third foul of the afternoon. So Dawson Sharman with a pair of free throws coming. And Jen Sherbarth losing pieces of her armor. She'll get that wrap secured and uh, ready to go now as one of the clips that holds that bandage on her right calf had come off. They've got it put back together and now we're ready to go. And now they're going to say that now they're going to say that Jen has to come out of the game. Uh, a rule I'm assuming about a equipment uh, equipment problem and the uh, official instructed them to put some tape on it so it doesn't happen again. 148 to go in the third quarter. It is a 20 to 17 three-point lead for Potter Dix. Sharman at the line, first free throw off the back iron, no good. And now McLaughlin into the game. She'll take the place of Courtney Lewis. So Tana Badge back into the game. She replaces Sherbarth. Badge playing with four fouls, we think. We've disagreed with the, with the scoreboard operator the whole way here as that second free throw is good, and it makes it a four-point lead at 21 to 17. Jancic. Gets it across. She finds hiding in the corner. She's got Kate Roberts off balance shot, but she gets it to fall. Kate Roberts puts in two more. She has six on the afternoon, 134 to go, and it's back to a two-point lead at 21 to 19. That one thrown out of bounds, turned over by the Coyotes. Hay Springs Hawk basketball. Hawks need to work quickly before that press gets a chance to get set up. Whitney Hiding takes the inbounds pass, dribbles through the trap. She finds Jancic ahead of her. Now they find Kate Roberts. She can't quite handle the pass. She had another easy layup if she can handle that pass, but she couldn't get a hold of it. Tana Badge flips it out. Hiding, three-pointer on the way. In and out, no good. Kate Roberts, she is fouled. And Kate Roberts will head to the line for a pair of free throws and a chance to tie this one up. That's the second foul on Savannah Shaw now for Potter Dix. 1.12 to go, and Kate Roberts at the line for a pair of free throws. Kate is two for four from the line this afternoon. She's the only Hawk that's been able to find the rim from the free throw line. The first one is good. And we're back to a one-point game at 21 to 20. Hawks have trailed the whole way. They've been back as close as one. See if Kate can make this one and tie it up at 21. 1.12 to go in the third quarter. Second free throw is good. We are tied. Tied at 21. And the Hawks need to stop. As we approach one minute left in the third quarter. Glass has it tipped away by Jancic. Now she'll get it back and then Jancic going to be called for the blocking foul. That is just Jancic's second foul. It is the sixth team foul for the Hawks, though. So the next team foul by Hay Springs puts the Coyotes into the one and one bonus. Glass got hung up on the baseline, but somehow she was able to find Shaw and get it out of there. Shaw tries to go inside. That one's taken away. Great job by Emma Roberts. Reached in and just stole that ball away. Tied at 21, 45 seconds to go. Hay Springs with a chance to take the lead. Jancic gets it back to hiding. Over the top, pass too tall for Emma Roberts, taken away. Here comes Shaw, and she double dribbled with it. Tried to gather it up and make the pass. It slipped out of her hands. It'll go back over to the Hawks with 34 seconds left in the third quarter, tied at 21. Whitney Hiding brings it up with 30 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Hawks trying to take the lead across to Sherbarth. On the wing for Badge. They go inside for Emma Roberts, but it's tipped away and pulled out of there by Sharman. Sharman, two on three. Now she'll wisely wait for some reinforcements. She gets it to Shaw. She drives to the baseline, tries to work it inside. Picked up by Emma Roberts. Somehow Potter Dix comes out of there with it again. That three-pointer is no good. And now Langley is going to be fouled, and she'll head to the line with 4.6 seconds left 
in the third quarter, and Tana Badge, I believe, just fouled out. We've got to see. Yes, they do agree. That was the fifth foul on Tana Badge. She is out of the game. And that'll be it for Badge here in the third quarter. So she got in foul trouble early and picks up her fourth. Tana leaves the game. She tried a couple of free throws, ends up with no points, but some quality minutes. She would like to have had more of those. As now into the game comes the five foot six inch senior, number 34, Emily Summers now for Hay Springs. So Emily on the team because she lost a bet. She was our cameraman for the first game against Cody Kilgore. And she had bet, uh, made a bet with somebody, and the, the Hawks won that game. And she is now part of the team. So Langley makes one of the two. And it's now a one-point game. Long shot, nearly good by hiding at the buzzer, but didn't quite go. And at the end of three, it is Hay Springs 21 and Potter Dix 22 here on Sheridan County Journal Star.net coverage of Hay Springs Basketball 2015. Great Plains Communications. GPC TV is proud to announce our brand new weather feature on Channel 2. It is now your 24-7 location for current, local, and national weather using advanced satellite imaging. From today's temperature to the full five-day forecast, GPC TV has you covered. We will continue to air local sports in your favorite Husker programs. The other providers simply can't compete. When you need weather now, you need GPC TV on Channel 2. So a very low scoring third quarter. As the Hawks keep chipping away, they trailed by four at the end of one. They trailed by two at halftime. They trail by just one after they had tied it up in the third quarter. We head to the fourth. Hawks down by one in a very close ball game, 22 to 21. But the Hawks with one less bullet in the arsenal as Tana Badge has fouled out. And they'll have to play the fourth quarter without her. Eight minutes left to go in this one. Hay Springs will have the basketball to get things started here in the fourth quarter. Seven team fouls for the Hawks, and so Potter Dix in the one and one the rest of the way. Five team fouls for the Coyotes. Jen Sherbarth drives baseline. Now she's trapped, and she traveled. Sherbarth drove in on the baseline there. They were able to get the trap and got the travel and the turnover, so Potter Dix basketball just underway in the fourth quarter. They go inside for Roselle. Good, tough shot by Roselle. Up and good. Extends the lead to three at 24-21. Now trying to really extend that pressure. And the Hawks are able to break it. Jancic on the wing for Sherbarth. Sherbarth will dribble up and get it to Hiding. Hiding drives down the right side. Tries to go inside for Roberts. Pass deflected, here comes Sharman, two on one. She finds Glass cutting to the basket. That won't go, Emma Roberts with the rebound. Whitney Hiding will bring it up. Pace of action quickening here a bit in the fourth quarter. Both teams trying to kick it up a notch, as Emerald would say, and now we've got a foul. I believe we're gonna get Shaw with the reach. We do, that is Savannah Shaw's third foul of the afternoon. And now the Hawks one foul away from getting themselves into the one and one bonus. Under seven to go, fourth quarter. Hiding across to Emma Roberts. Emma drives in. In the lane, that won't go. Rebound pulled down by Shaw. Brings it up the left side. She's out of bounds. A little bit. Two. By Potter. With. Now we've got a substitution. And that's Paige Hoffman. She'll come in and replace Glass in the lineup. So Jancic gets it into hiding. Now she finds Emma Roberts. Hawks with numbers. And that's tipped out of bounds by McLaughlin. Hay Springs had numbers. They had a three on two. And now they're going to say that after McLaughlin touched it, Kate Roberts got a piece of it. And it'll turn it back over to Potter Dix. 
It's a three-point lead for the Coyotes, 24-21 with 6.35 to go in the fourth quarter. Hoffman takes the ball at the top of the key. Shaw, pump fake, tries to go inside, taken away. Now a scramble for it. Ball comes out. There's Shaw with the quick hands, picks it back up. Sharman, top of the key. Shaw on the wing. They'll skip it across to Hoffman. Now back up for Sharman. She'll drive into the free throw line. Her jumper off the mark, no good. And all kinds of contact. It's been that way the whole way as Hoffman, Hoffman puts that one in for two points. Six minutes on the dot, and it's back to a five-point lead. That is the biggest lead of the game, or equals the biggest lead of the game for Potter Dix. And another, another uh, turnover on the full-court pressure by the Hawks. 5.46 to go. Hawks need a stop here. They can't let this grow to seven. Inside for Roselle, and we got an offensive foul on Roselle. She tried to muscle her way in there. She's called for the offensive foul. That's her third. So the Hawks get the basketball. Here's Emma Roberts. Brings it across the timeline. Down low for Kate Roberts. She'll kick it out for Jancic. Whitney hiding top of the key. Now to Jancic, and she'll bring it up between the circles and get it to Jen Sherbarth. Little miscommunication there. Sherbarth gets it back to Jancic, now to Hiding. Hiding drives inside. Her shot partially blocked, but Sherbarth is there to gather it up. She tries to get it out to Jancic. She will get it after it's deflected. Here comes Hiding now. Top of the key, dribbles to the right side. Now back for Jancic. Jancic back to hiding. Five minutes left to go, fourth quarter. They find Sherbarth on the baseline in the corner. She tries to feed it inside, jump ball, and it'll go to the Coyotes on the alternating possession. 4.57 to go, fourth quarter, and it's a five-point Potter Dix lead. Hawks have hung tough the whole way, trying to find a way to get a W in the win column here. Sharman, top of the key, right side for Hoffman. Up top for Shaw, they swing it around. That's... And we got a kick ball. Got a kick ball, and it'll be out of bounds to the Coyotes. Now Julif's back in. She's got four fouls. She replaces Sharman. Roselle to inbound it with 4.46 to go, fourth quarter. She gets it into Julif's. Julif's dribbles it up to the top of the key. Now back down in the corner. Three pointer on the way by Roselle. That's no good. Good box out that time by Sherbarth, but couldn't get back to the basketball, and Potter Dix comes up with it. Now we're going to have a blocking foul, I believe called on Jen Sherbarth. It is Sherbarth. That is her second foul, but unfortunately that's going to put the Coyotes at the line, and that'll be Audrey Julius with a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Julius with two points here this afternoon, and it's a five-point lead for Potter Dix at 26-21. Julius sizes it up and misses. Rebound by Sherbarth. Emma Roberts to bring it up now for the Hay Springs Hawks with 4.27 to go. And she carried it again. She uh, comes up that right side, sees an opening, and as she pauses to change direction, they're calling her for turning that ball over and carrying it. We got a timeout on the floor. 4.24 to go in the fourth quarter. Potter Dix leads this one 26-21. And this is a great opportunity to remind you that if you're not a subscriber of the Sheridan County Journal Star, you certainly should be. Be in tune to all the news that is news in Sheridan County and sign up for the online edition and get the news before anybody else. That uh, online edition available usually on Tuesday afternoons. Paper copies not available until Wednesday at the earliest. If they go through the mail, no telling when you might get it. So check, check out the uh, online edition of the Sheridan County Journal Star. That's available at SheridanCountyJournalStar.net slash subscriptions. And the bonus of the online edition is that it is available in full and glorious color. So back to fourth quarter basketball action here. Potter Dix leads this one 26 to 21. Seven team fouls against the Coyotes, eight team fouls against the Hawks. So both teams in the one and one bonus for the rest of the way. 
Julefs brings it across the timeline. Hawks back into that 2-3 zone. Julefs dribbles down to the corner. Now she picks up her dribble, guarded closely by Whitney Hiding. And she'll finally find McLaughlin. McLaughlin drives into the lane. Little floater, that won't go, tipped around. There is Sydney Jancic with the rebound. And four minutes on the dot left to go here in the fourth quarter. Hay Springs trails it by five. Need to find some offense here as Hiding works to her right. Back up to Emma Roberts. Now outside for Jancic. Now back to Emma Roberts, and we've got a tie up on the floor, but this one will stay with the Hawks. Three forty-seven left in regulation, 26 to 21. Hiding finds Emma Roberts on the left wing. Now back to Hiding. She'll swing it around to Jancic. Jancic Roberts at the drives in. Her shot blocked by Roselle. She'll back it out, and there's a big swing by McLaughlin, and the block pulled out of there by Julefs, and she'll get it ahead to Hoffman. Back to Julefs, swings it around, and that is Shaw. Julefs swings it back to Hoffman. Now back to Julefs and back to Shaw. Three-pointer on the way for Shaw. That one's no good, and rebounded by Hiding, but we've got a foul. I think that's going to go against Roselle. That is against Alexis Roselle. That is her fourth foul with 3.15 to go, and that'll put the Hawks at the line shooting a one-and-one. One. That'll be Jen Sherbarth with the one-and-one one opportunity. Jen 0 for 2 this afternoon from the free throw line. Now a couple of subs coming in. That's Glass and Sharman into the game. They'll replace Shaw and Hoffman in the lineup for Potter Dix. So a one-and-one one opportunity for Jen Sherbarth. Hawks having a heck of a time from the free throw line here this afternoon. That one's off the mark, no good. Rebounded by Roselle, who stays in there with four fouls. 3.10 to go, and it's a five-point Coyote lead. Sharman, three-pointer. That one's no good. Glass comes out of there with it, and Sidney Jancic wins the wrestling match with McLaughlin, takes it away. Hay Springs Hawk basketball. Emma Roberts coming down the right side, inside for Kate Roberts. Up and good. Kate Roberts with two more. And the Hawks are back within three with 2.48 to go. It's 26 to 23. Sharman on the wing. Drives down to the baseline. Now she'll pull it back. Roselle tees up the three-pointer. That one's short over the edge and falls in. Roselle got the friendly roll that time. And we got a blocking foul now. That's going to be called against, uh, no, excuse me, that's Brooke Glass that picks up the foul. And so back to the line come the Hawks, but they now trail by six. That is the biggest lead of the game for Potter Dix with 2.31 to go. It puts Emma Roberts at the line for the one and one opportunity. Emma Roberts 0 for 1 from the free throw line this afternoon. First free throw, that one's off no good, but there's Jen Sherbarth for the rebound. The putback is good. Jen Sherbarth knocks it down. She's got four on the afternoon. Back to a four-point game now at 29-25. to 25. Julefs now. So two, uh, two uh, Coyotes playing with four fouls. That one's tipped out of bounds by Hiding. And it'll stay with Potter Dix with 2.11 left to go. Hawks need to get things going here. Pick up the pace a little bit. They trail by four. They'll get it into Julefs. Skip it around to Glass. She'll drive in, tries to get it to McLaughlin, kicks it out for Julefs. Three-pointer by Julefs. Off the back iron, no good. And contact as Roselle hits the floor hard. But the Coyotes maintain possession. We're under two minutes to go. And now Hiding going to foul. Hay Springs going to try and make the Coyotes do it from the free throw line. Hiding picks up her second foul. And it puts Julefs at the line for the one and one. Not sure that the Hawks really needed to foul quite this early, but they get the stoppage in play and try and regroup here just a little bit as Julefs rolls that one around and good. She'll have one more coming. Makes it 30 to 25 with 155 left to go. Second free throw is also good. She made them both. And it's back to a six-point lead. 1.54 to go. Hawks down two scores at least. 
Three-pointer on the way for Hiding. In and out, no good. Rebound by McLaughlin. Gets it to Roselle, and Roselle's going to be fouled by Sherbarth. Jen Sherbarth picks up her third, and Roselle will head to the line for a one-and-one. And, and now they're going to say in the double bonus. And so both teams from here on out will be in the double bonus the rest of the way. Roselle lines it up and knocks it down, and the lead has grown to seven. Slowly slipping away from the Hawks here in the fourth quarter. 142 left to go. And that one's off no good, rebounded by Hiding. So it's now a three-score game for sure as Sidney Jancic takes the long pass. Hiding across to Roberts, just inside the three-point line. Her shot won't go, and the rebound by McLaughlin. She brings it out. Hiding pokes it away. And they're going to say out of bounds, off of Hiding. Roselle to inbound it with 1.28 to go. They'll get it into McLaughlin. She finds Julefs. Julefs going to pull it back out and kill some time. And Jancic going to draw the foul that time. Sydney Jancic picks up her third. That'll send Julefs back to the line. And Julefs went two for two the last time at the line. 1.22 to go fourth quarter. It's a 32-25 Potter Dix lead. Julius knocks that one down, and the lead is now eight. So the Hawks battled the whole way, but just not able to quite close the deal here in the fourth as that one rattles around, and Roselle with the rebound, and she's fouled on the putback, and that'll put Roselle back at the line for two free throws. She is three for four from the charity stripe so far here this afternoon. First free throw is short, no good. But she's got one more coming. 121 to go, fourth quarter. It's an eight-point lead by Potter Dix. Hay Springs gonna have to get things done in a hurry as both of those are no good. And we got a timeout called on the floor. A timeout came uh, from Hay Springs. So with 119 left to go in the fourth quarter. It is 33 to 25, Potter Dix with the lead. Pioneer Manor is a premier skilled nursing and assisted living facility located in Hay Springs. We provide rehabilitation services and around the clock skilled care in a comfortable and friendly environment. At Pioneer Manor, our guiding principle is to provide outstanding and innovative health care in an environment that remembers the importance of the individual and family. Our staff of dedicated professionals embodies the values that we cherish most, a nurturing spirit and a commitment to quality. That is the Pioneer Manor in Hay Springs. The Security First Bank of Hay Springs is your hometown bank, proudly supporting the Hawks, their FDIC insured, and an equal opportunity lender. Security First Bank, a relationship you can count on. And the Sand Hill State Bank in Hay Springs is proud to support the Hawks. Locally owned, locally focused, Sand Hills State Bank, the most committed brand in banking. SandHillsState.com, member FDIC. 119 left to go, fourth quarter. Hay Springs trails this one 33 to 25. Both teams in the double bonus the rest of the way. Hawks with some work to do here. Jen Sherbarth gets it back to Jancic. Jancic to Hiding. Hiding guarded closely. Wasting time with 109 to go. Just inside the line for Emma Roberts. That misses everything, but the rebound is out of bounds off Roselle. It'll stay with the Hawks with 105 to go. Certainly not out of the realm of possibility here, here as they're down by eight, but they need some three-pointers to fall. Jen Sherbarth, that one blocked, and McLaughlin with the rebound, and the tie-up called, but the possession arrow goes to Potter Dix, and they'll have the basketball, and Hay Springs going to have to provide some full court pressure here and try and make something happen. They'll get it into Julefs. Julefs brings it up the floor. We're under a minute left now. Julefs all the way down to the corner. Julefs inside for McLaughlin. Her shot up and good. McLaughlin with the hoop and the foul. And that will just about do it, I'm afraid. 
They're going to give that foul to Kate Roberts. That is her fourth, but it makes it a 10-point lead with 48 seconds left to go and one shot coming for McLaughlin. So Anna McLaughlin puts it up and misses the shot, and I think we're going to get Roselle with her fifth foul as everybody hit the floor that time. She ran over Emma Roberts. Emma not looking too good as she comes off the bottom of that pile. That is the fifth foul on Roselle as she has now fouled out. She'll leave the game with, uh, we'll see if we can total it up here, 10 points on the afternoon for Alexis Roselle. So she'll leave the game. Courtney Lewis comes in to replace her with 47 seconds left to go. So a 10-point lead, and Emma Roberts at the line shooting two free throws. Emma working that right elbow, trying to get some of the pain worked out of it. First free throw is up and good. And it's back to a nine-point game. Still time left for these Hawks, but they've got to work quickly. Things have kind of got to fall their way if they're going to make it happen. And she made them both. Go so back to an eight-point lead. Hawks going to try and trap, and Julius dribbles right through it. Comes the full length of the floor, and now they're going to get the foul called on Whitney Hiding. She thought it was a clean job that time, but it wasn't. She'll pick up her third foul, and it'll send Sharman to the line for a pair of free throws. Sharman with four points on the afternoon. Oh, and that is the fourth foul on uh, Hiding now. First free throw no good by Sharman, so Hiding with four fouls. 41 seconds left to go. Sharman with one more shot coming. It's 35-27, so it's an eight-point deficit for the Hawks. They've got two timeouts with which to work. They missed both free throws. That's out of bounds off of Kate Roberts. It'll go back over to the Coyotes with 40 seconds left. So the Hawks having a hard time getting a break here as we finish up the fourth quarter. Things just not rolling their direction. Sharman takes that inbounds pass. Hiding doesn't want to pick up her fourth foul. Somebody's going to have to foul, and now Jen Sherbarth will. She fouls Julefs. Sherbarth picks up her fourth foul, and that'll put Julefs back at the line for two free throws. Julius three for five today from the free throw line. 33.8 seconds left and an eight point Potter Dix lead. First free throw off the back iron, no good. But she's got one more coming. Julius with five points here this afternoon. And she missed them both as that one rolls off, no good, but there is Courtney Lewis in the right place at the right time with the rebound and the putback stretches that lead back to 10 points with 25 seconds left to go. Roberts up top for Jancic, swings it around. Jen Sherbarth, that one partially blocked out of bounds. They're going to say not touched. They're going to say she missed it all, and it's Potter Dix basketball with 17.7 to go and a 10-point lead at 37 to 27. They'll get it in, and Emma Roberts with the quick foul, but with 16 seconds left, probably too little too late. That puts Brooke Glass at the free throw line for a pair of free throws. She's got two points this afternoon. But the Hawks battle into the very end here. They were very, very much in this game all the way deep into the fourth quarter here, but it's just slipped away at the very end. Second free throw misses as well. That's tipped out of bounds. And they're going to give it to Hay Springs. So 15.3 seconds left. Hawks with the basketball. They'll get it in to Emma Roberts. And it's all academic at this point as Roberts brings it up. Long three-pointer off the glass. That one won't go. And a tie-up. That one's going to stay with the Hawks. 6.6 to go here in the fourth quarter. Jancic to inbound. It goes over the top to Emma Roberts with six to go. Her shot up and good. Two more for Emma Roberts. 
She's got six on the day. And time runs out. And the final score, Potter Dix 37 and Hay Springs 29. We'll step aside. We'll be back with some final scoring totals for you after this. And then we'll be back with boys varsity basketball action in just a little bit. So the final score from Potter Dix 37 to 29 as the Coyotes knock off the Hay Springs Hawks. Be back with some unofficial scoring totals after this. When it comes to your land, it pays to be smart. At New Holland, smart means giving you a wide range of options to fit your needs, like smooth cutting, plug-free conditioning, and versatility. Smart means putting more hay in the bale and leaving less in the field. It also means providing exceptional after-sale support and growing a legacy that goes far beyond equipment. That's New Holland Smart. Visit your local New Holland dealer today. It's an icon, the most popular sports car in America. It is the Ford Mustang, and it's available at Sides and Milburn Ford in Rushville. This 310 horsepower turbocharged beauty comes with all the bells and whistles, and it's sure to turn heads wherever you go. The selectable driving modes allow you to choose between sport, track, snow and wet, or normal conditions. With an awesome sound system, this Mustang is ready to roll down the highway at 32 miles per gallon. Test drive the iconic Ford Mustang at Sides and Milburn Ford in Rushville. So let's take a look at scoring totals from tonight's game or this afternoon's game between the Hawks and the Coyotes. For the Hawks, leading the way, Kate Roberts with 10 points. Whitney Hiding added nine. All nine of those in the first half. Hiding not able to find the scoreboard in the second half. Emma Roberts added six, and Jen Sherbarth with four for the Hawks here this afternoon. From the free throw line, the Hawks shot a lot better in the second half. They went five for eight on the game. Uh, free throws, six for 15. Hawks' record now goes to four and seven on the season. For the Potter Dix Coyotes, leading the way was Alexis Rosell with 10 points. Anna McLaughlin added eight. Audrey Julefs, the freshman, added five. And then four points for Courtney Lewis and Dawson Sharman. Two points for Paige Hoffman, two points for Brooke Glass, two for Savannah Shaw, and one for Trinity Langley. And after going three for five from the free throw line in the first half, Coyotes cooled off considerably as they went just six for 18 in the second half. They finished the game nine for 23 from the free throw line. Again, the final score between uh, Hay Springs and Potter Dix. The Coyotes come away with a victory by a final score of 37 to 29. We will step aside and get ready for boys varsity action, Hay Springs, and Potter Dix, boys varsity action, a pair of evenly matched teams here. Hawks come in at two and eight, and the Coyotes at three and seven. Give us a little time to prepare. We'll get you some starting lineups and be back in about 18 minutes for the opening tip of boys varsity basketball action here on Sheridan County Journal Star.net coverage of Hay Springs Basketball 2015.
Hi, I'm Clint Anderson, and I hope you enjoyed today's game. Wherever we're broadcasting from, you can bet that I got there in a Ford vehicle from Sides and Milburn Ford in Rushville. I've been a Sides and Milburn customer for over 20 years, and I can't imagine going anywhere else to buy or trade vehicles. I may be able to find a cheaper vehicle somewhere else, but the hometown service I get at Sides and Milburn Ford is worth way more than a trip to Rapid City or Denver. I hope you enjoy today's game. And when you're ready to trade vehicles, stop in and see the good folks at Sides and Milburn Ford in Rushville. New Holland has equipped farmers with the right technology for over a century and continues to provide smart innovations like our exclusive corn rower attachment for our CR Series Combine. We make certain you have all the tools to grow your bottom line while improving efficiency and productivity allowing you to work smarter in order to spend more time with the ones you love. That's New Holland Smart. Visit your local New Holland dealer today. Tim Marlatt and Brian Felker at Physical Therapy West and Gordon have over 30 years of combined experience in providing physical therapy and sports medicine services. Contact PT West for care following injury, sprains, fractures, or treatment of joint, muscle, and back pain. PT West provides individualized rehabilitation following joint replacement, surgery, or stroke. Don't suffer. Don't live with pain. And get back to the activities you enjoy. Call PT West at 308-282-0203 or stop by with questions at 100 South Main in Gordon. Great Plains Communications. Great Plains Communications values its Nebraska roots. For four generations, family-owned Great Plains Communications has provided local service in Nebraska. For more than 100 years, our technicians have lived and worked in the communities we serve. Local service, Nebraska-owned. Great Plains Communications. Great Plains Communications. Welcome home. So we are just about 10 minutes away from the opening tip of boys varsity action between Hay Springs and Potter Dix from Potter, Nebraska this afternoon. Glad to be down here. Another long road trip for these Hay Springs Hawks as they get set to take on the three and seven Potter Dix Coyotes here this afternoon. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for these two teams here this afternoon for the Hawks. Starting five, number zero, Jordan Insinius. He is a five foot 10 inch junior. Number five is Drew Letcher, a six foot sophomore. Number 13, Austin Reed, a 5'10 junior. Number 25, Eli Badge is a six foot three inch senior. And number 34, Garrett Wires, a six foot three inch sophomore. Last night, the Hawks lost a tough one to the Gordon Rushville Mustangs. They fell 56 to 42 in that effort. Jordan Encinia scored 19 points, and the other scorer of note, Garrett Wires, added eight second half points. All eight of his points came in the second half last night as the Hawks fell to Class C1 Gordon Rushville, 56 to 42. For the Potter Dix Coyotes, the starting five here this afternoon, number 22, Jake Johnson, is a six foot senior. Number 24, Cameron Purcell is a six foot senior. Number 30, Trace Sharman is a 5'11 senior. Number 34, Cooper Hicks, a six foot senior. And number 50, Cole Christensen, a six foot one inch junior. So a lot of height for the, uh, well not a lot of big height, but a lot of average height there as everybody six foot or right around there for the Potter Dix Coyotes to start this afternoon's action. Just under nine minutes to the opening tip of today's Boys Varsity Action. Thanks for joining us here on Sheridan County Journal Star.net coverage of Hay Springs Basketball 2015. Again, we'd like to remind you that if you're not a subscriber to the Sheridan County Journal Star, you certainly should be, as you can stay in tune to all the news that is news in Sheridan County, and you can do that in full color, available on Tuesday afternoons with the online edition. And the paper doesn't officially come out until Wednesday. So know the news before anybody else does. Check out the online edition at SheridanCountyJournalStar.net slash subscriptions. So eight minutes left before the opening tip. We'll step aside one more time 
We'll be back for the beginning of the game between Hay Springs and Potter Dix in just about eight minutes. So just about four minutes and 20 seconds left to go before the opening tip of this afternoon's boys, bar boys varsity basketball action between Hay Springs and Potter Dix. Glad to have you along with us, and we are certainly glad to be here to bring this action to you this afternoon. We have a lot of fun doing these broadcasts. We're glad to have so many people tuning in and watching, and uh, it really makes it worthwhile to, to, uh, to do this. We don't always get it exactly right, but we sure have an awful lot of fun trying. And uh, would certainly like to thank uh, the Hay Springs uh, parents, grandparents that provided the care package for us after last week's game. We had a nice tin of uh, cookies and sweets, and we certainly appreciated that immensely and uh, got an awful lot of mileage out of that. So thank you very much, and glad to Glad to be along here and, and doing this for you here today and, and uh, just glad to have everybody along and watching here this afternoon. Three minutes and 20 seconds left to go before the opening tip. Let's take one last quick look at the starting lineups for both of these teams. For the Hay Springs Hawks, they'll send the starting five out onto the floor this afternoon. Jordan Insinia, Drew Letcher, Austin Reed, Eli Badge, and Garrett Wires. 
And for the Potter Dix Coyotes, Jake Johnson, Cameron Purcell, Trace Sharman, Cooper Hicks, and Cole Christensen, their starting five. Just a couple of minutes from getting this thing underway, and so one last chance for you to run to the refrigerator and get a couple of snacks and be back in time for the opening tip. Two minutes and 35 seconds left to go in the pregame activities. We'll be back with the opening tip and the, uh, but first the um, introductions of the starting lineups in just a little bit. So just about ready to get things underway here between the two and eight Hay Springs Hawks and the three and seven Potter Dix Coyotes. Just about ready for some starting lineups and to get this thing underway. In case you missed it last night, Hay Springs played a heck of a tough game against a much bigger school. Class C1 Gordon Rushville came to town and the Mustangs prevailed in that one, 56 to 42, but a, a good effort by the Hay Springs Hawks. And we'll turn it over to the public address announcer for the introductions of the starting lineups. starting lineups. We've got eight minutes on the clock and we are ready to get this one underway from Potter Dix High School here in Potter, Nebraska here this afternoon. Garrett Wires ready to jump it up against Cole Christensen. And we are underway. Christensen wins the tip. That's uh, controlled by Johnson. He'll bring it up and set it up for the Coyotes. Purcell on the wing. Now he'll bring it up between the circles and they'll get it set. Christensen inside. Now it comes back out to Purcell. Now back on the wing. That is that is Hicks as we try to get names and numbers put together here. That one's taken away by Insinia inside. Good quick hands by the Hawks. Insinia with the steal. And the Hawks get the first turnover of the game. Insinia in the corner for Badge. Drew Letcher on the wing, thought about the three. Now Insinia back up top being guarded by Purcell. Looks like a 1-3-1 one, one zone defense here for the Coyotes to get things started. In the corner, now back up to Letcher. Back in the corner for Insinia. Three-pointer is good! Jordan Insinia starts things off the right way. Three-pointer from the corner. 
Gives Hay Springs the early lead with 7.05 to go. And another takeaway by the Hawks inside. Eli Badge comes away with that one. And Insinia will bring it up the floor. And they'll set it up again. Drew Letcher on the left wing. Now Insinia. Now to Austin Reed and down in the corner for Eli Badge. Eli puts it on the floor. Now a kick it outside for Letcher. Letcher skips it all the way across for Reed. Now back to Badge. That one's tipped out of bounds. Badge was going to have an easy layup if uh, Trace Sharman doesn't get back and tip that thing out of bounds. As it is, the Hay Springs Hawks will control the basketball. Badge to inbound it. Gets it in to Reed. Reed to Letcher. Letcher gets it over to Insinia. Three-pointer on the way from Insinia. That one's no good. Rebounded by Purcell. And he'll bring it up the floor. 6.25 to go. First quarter. Hay Springs leads this one 3 to 0. Now they'll give it off to Sharman. And back to Johnson. Purcell tries to work it inside. Back out to Purcell. His three pointer is off the mark. No good. And Insinia comes out of there with the rebound. Hawks want to run. Insinia up the floor. Now he'll back it out. And they'll reset. Gets it to Reed. He skips it across to Letcher. Fakes the three pointer. Now he'll drive into the free throw line. And he traveled, got himself in no man's land there where he couldn't shoot it and had too much speed to stop and put it up and nobody to pass it to. As we're under six to go, Hay Springs leads this one three to zero. Purcell brings it up. That's Johnson in the corner, has it poked away by Badge. It'll stay with the Coyotes. So Johnson will inbound it. He'll go into the middle for Christensen, and he is going to be fouled on the shot. Cole Christensen will have two free throws. And they give that foul to Garrett Wires. That is his first. So Cole Christensen with the first of two here. 5.44 to go in the first quarter. That one rattles around and falls in, and it's a 3-1 to one ball game. He's got one more coming. And Christensen makes the free throw, but we got a foul called. So the foul or the free throw is good. We've got a foul called on one of the Hawks here. That's on Austin Reed, and that is his first foul. So out of bounds, Purcell the inbound it. He gets it into Christensen. Christensen to Johnson at the top at the high post. Now back to Christensen. Johnson top of the key, he drives in, has it slapped away and taken out of there by Austin Reed. So the Hawks with turnovers on three possessions where they've turned the ball over, they've taken it away on three of the four possessions by the Coyotes here in the early going. 5.23 into the corner, Eli Badge. Now back to Encinia, three-pointer on the way. That one's off the mark, no good. And we're going to get Austin Reed for a push as he was going for the rebound. Austin Reed with two quick fouls here in the first quarter. Austin Reed, a hard-working player. Subtle as a chainsaw in his basketball finesse, and he does a lot of the muscle work for the Hawks inside. And he gets called for his second foul as they swing it around. Purcell now in the corner, trying to get it inside for Christensen. Now his pull-up jumper off glass and good for Cameron Purcell. And now the Coyotes with the one-point lead at 4-3. to three. Across the timeline to Austin Reed. Austin leaves it outside for Letcher in the corner for Badge. His shot is good. Eli Badge knocks that one down, and that puts the Hawks back in front 5-4 to four, with 4.40 to go in the first quarter. Sharman gets it up top for Christensen. Christensen to Johnson, throws that away, but Purcell is there to gather it in. Purcell, pull-up jumper, knocks that one down, and Purcell has four. That puts the Coyotes back up at 6-5, to five. so lots of lead changes in the early going here, and we're going to get Eli Badge with an offensive foul. Eli reached up and gave an elbow, trying to get himself some space, and they called him for the offensive foul. So four team fouls already for Hay Springs in the early going here of the first quarter. 4.17 left to go in the first. It's a 6-5 ball game in favor of the Coyotes. Johnson up top for Christensen. Swing it around. They find Purcell in the corner. Purcell eyes it, tries it, can't get it to go. That one's out of bounds. Johnson 
Throws it back in, but it's collected by Eli Badge. And here come the Hay Springs Hawks under four to go in the first quarter. Encinia to Austin Reed on the wing. Skips it all the way across Badge, just inside the three-point line. Misses everything, and the rebound by Johnson. Johnson the other way. Now he'll slow it down. Gets it ahead to Purcell. Off the glass, and good. Cameron Purcell's got six. Going to have to get a hand in that young man's face. He knows how to shoot it. Eight to five. It's a three-point lead for the Coyotes. Drew Letcher, top of the key. Three-pointer is good. Nothing but the bottom of the net for Drew Letcher. And it's tied at eight with 324 to go. First quarter action back and forth. Hawks tied back up at eight. This is Sharman. Works it for Purcell in the corner. Johnson down low for uh, Hicks. That shot off the side of the backboard and rebounded by the Hawks. They'll get it to Encinia and he'll bring it across with three minutes to go in the first quarter. Austin Reed on the wing. Up top for Letcher. Hawks have dialed it in from long range today. Here's another three-pointer by Austin Reed. That one misses everything. That's out of bounds. Should stay, should stay with the Hawks and it does. That was Cooper Hicks trying to get a handle on it and couldn't quite get it done. As now into the game comes Kelsey Roselle. He'll take the place of Sharman. In the corner, Drew Letcher, three-pointer. That one rattles off, no good. Rebound Christensen. Gets it ahead to Roselle. Now back to Purcell, and he'll bring it up the floor for the Coyotes. Purcell looks things over, lets the offense get set. They'll go to Roselle. He'll drive into the free throw line. Christensen, head fake, and we're going to... Get one of the Hawks called for a foul. Austin Reed was over there. We'll hope that's not going to be called on him. They're going to get Letcher with the foul, and that is his first. Tied at 8, 2.30 to go first quarter. Roselle gets it into Purcell. Purcell drives into the lane, pull-up jumper, and knocks that one down. Purcell is a dangerous weapon. He's got eight first quarter points. 10 to 8. It's a two-point Coyote lead with 2.15 to go in the first. Drew Letcher. Thought about the three. Insinia drives baseline and draws the blocking foul. So the Coyotes have to respect the outside shooting of Jordan Insinia. And when he put it on the floor, Jake Johnson called for the blocking foul. That is Johnson's first. They'll find Insinia on the wing on the inbounds play. Switches re uh, directions. Three pointer by Insinia. That one's short off the front of the rim. Rebound Christensen. Finds Purcell with two minutes left to go, and he'll bring it across. Coyotes lead it by two, 10 to eight. They go to Christensen at the high post. Christensen. Christensen in danger of getting a three-second call, and he does. Spent too much time in there without doing anything with it, and once again, the Coyotes turn the ball over. So a bunch of turnovers by Potter Dix here in the early going, but they still lead it 10 to eight with 148 left to go in the first quarter. Austin Reed on the wing, playing with two early fouls. Skips it across for Insinia. Back to Letcher. Now they'll swing it down in the corner for Badge. A little touch pass back to Insinia. Austin Reed inside the three-point line, and that one is good for Austin Reed. So spreading it around this afternoon for the Hay Springs Hawks. We're tied at 10, under 130 to go in the first quarter. This is Hicks putting it on the floor, and we've got an offensive foul. No, he turned it over, excuse me. Was looking down at the score sheet, didn't quite see, but he had to have carried the basketball and another turnover by the Coyotes. As now Hicks comes out and into the game comes Trevor Harms for the Coyotes. Trevor Harms goes six foot six, so a big upgrade in size here for the Coyotes with Harms into the game. 120 to go now, tied at 10. Now a little bit of pressure by the Coyotes as Insinia Gets it across, and now they'll set it up. They're looking to trap Insinia. Loses the handle, gets it back. He finds Eli Badge. Badge too far under the basket. Ball comes loose, and that one's tipped away by Garrett Wires. Good battle by Garrett that time, but it's gonna say they're going to say Garrett was the last to touch it, and it'll go back over to Potter Dix with 1.03 to go. We are tied at 10. Purcell brings it up the floor. Purcell sets it up. Hawks in a 2-3 zone now. On the wing for Christensen. Christensen to Johnson, top of the key. Finds Roselle. Now he finds Purcell in the corner. That shot won't go. Tipped around, and 
It's Drew Letcher that comes out of there with it. Incendia Doss to Eli Bass. And late with his first back to a is and Cindy lots open to the hot box here as we go forward. We're tied at 12, we're under five to go. Johnson in the corner for Purcell at the buzzer. That one's short, no good. And at the end of one, a fast-paced first quarter. We are tied at 12 between Hay Springs and Potter Dix. We'll step aside and be right back. This is my 2012 Ford Focus from Sides and Milburn Ford in Rushville. I bought this car for short trips around the area and thought that I was getting an inexpensive disposable car. What I got was a roomy, comfortable, well-built car that gets outstanding fuel economy. It's great for going to Lincoln for a Husker game. I consistently get above 35 miles per gallon, and it comes in a package that is surprisingly comfy and fun to drive. You can test drive a Ford Focus at your Sheridan County Ford dealer. Sides in Milburn Ford in Rushville. Just about ready for second quarter basketball action as we are tied at 12, heading to the second quarter. As we're starting to get our crew better trained as we go forward, uh, cameraman Jesse Badge reminded me not to mess up on today's broadcast, and that's certainly the kind of good advice that we always need. Heading to the second quarter, we are tied at 12. Hay Springs with the basketball to start things off here in the second. Five team fouls for the Hawks, just one for Potter Dix. So Encinia brings it across the timeline, sets it up, finds Drew Letcher on the wing. In the corner for Encinia, three-pointer all alone. That one's a little bit too long, and the rebound pulled down by Harms. Purcell brings it up the floor for the Coyotes. Crosses the timeline, and the Hawks back in that 2-1-2 or 2-3 zone. Roselle finds Christensen in the corner. Christensen finds Roselle on the cut, and a nice look that time as he found Trey Sherman for the easy lay in that time, and back to some full-court pressure now by the Coyotes. Drew Letcher gets it ahead, now hiding into the game for the Hawks. Three-pointer by Letcher, that won't go, but there's another rebound by Hiding, making his presence felt right off the bat. And there's a two-pointer by Jordan and Sinia. We are tied at 14. Dakota Hiding, number one in the game now for the Hawks. Purcell, high post for Harms. Harms gets it to Roselle, drives baseline. Now they kick it up top for Christensen. Christensen looks, now he finds Purcell over on the wing. Hiding tasked with guarding him. Now he'll give him off to Drew Letcher as Purcell pulls it back out and the Coyotes reset with 6.40 to go in the second quarter. Tied at 14 in the corner for Roselle. Roselle. And that is Sharman. Roselle in the corner for three, knocks it down. And that's three for Kelsey Roselle. That's his first three points of the game. 17 to 14 is now the Coyote lead. Hiding gathers that one in. They'll get it to Insinia and the Hawks reset. Letcher in the corner for Badge. Drives baseline up. Reverse layup. Little too far under for that. Couldn't get it to go. That shot can't get it to fall and Insinia comes out of there with the basketball after the scrum. And the Hawks with another possession here. Drew Letcher three pointer. In and out. No good. But there's Eli Badge and he's blocked. His Second shot up, and that one also no good. And that one tipped around. Garrett Wires with the long arms and another takeaway. Good job by Garrett Wires that time. Reached out and took that ball out of the air. And now we've got a traveling call on Drew Letcher. So Hay Springs turns it over as now Hiding heads back to the bench and Austin Reed back into the game. 5.44 to go, and it's a 17-14 Coyote lead. Purcell sets it up, goes on the right wing, and that is Sharman. Sharman across to Roselle and in the corner for Purcell. Purcell drives, kicks it out. That's going to be kicked by Letcher, and they'll have to reset with 528 to go. 17 to 14. Coyotes lead this one by three. 
Hawks giving them everything they can handle. Three-pointer on the way, and that one rattled home by Cameron Purcell. He's got a bundle, and we've got a foul called. They're going to give that one to Trey Sharman, and that'll be his first, just the second team foul of the first half against the Coyotes. we got a timeout on the floor called by Potter Dix. They lead this one 20-14 to 14 with 5.18 left to go in the second quarter. Sand Hill State Bank in Hay Springs is proud to support the Hawks. Locally owned, locally focused. Sand Hills State Bank, the most committed brand in banking. SandHillsState.com, member FDIC. And Security First Bank of Hay Springs is your hometown bank, proudly supporting the Hawks. They're FDIC insured and an equal opportunity lender. Security First Bank, a relationship you can count on. 5.18 to go in the second quarter, and it's now a six-point Potter Dix lead at 20-18. to 18. Eli Badge gets it in to Austin Reed, gathers it up, and he'll get it ahead to Insinia. He brings it across. Insinia drives in to the free throw line. Spin move, and he traveled. Insinia had something going there, but one too many steps on the spin move, and they turn it back over. 20 to 14 is the score. Roselle on the wing. Now they'll swing it around. That's Sharman. Sharman drives in, kicks it across for Roselle, his three-pointer is good. And so now the Coyotes starting to dial it in from long range as they've hit a couple of three-pointers. Eli Badge brings it across and he'll get it back to Jordan Insinia as now the Coyotes have gone to a man-to-man -man look here. That one taken away by Johnson. Johnson lays that one up and in. He's got four on the afternoon and the lead all of a sudden has grown to nine as that one tipped out of bounds by Cooper Hicks but it'll stay with the Hawks, and so the full court pressure causing some difficulty for Hay Springs here. They get it into Insinia. He's able to pick it up, and now he'll accelerate, and the Hawks with numbers. They find Garrett Wires. Turnaround jumper by Wires, rattles around and falls in. Garrett Wires with two points. And something happened to Jordan Insinia. He's looks like, looks like he got dinged in the face there a little bit. Nose not looking so good as Jordan going to have to come out. Didn't see exactly what happened on the play. Give him a minute to get his wits about him, and I'm sure he'll be back into the game. He's replaced by West Lustus. Had some inadvertent work, uh, dental work done to him yesterday in the JV ball game. He's wearing a mouthpiece here this afternoon. Lost a tooth or at least part of one in yesterday's JV action, but came out and played in the varsity game against Gordon Rushville. As it is, it's a nine-point lead for the Potter Dix Coyotes, and now we're going to get a blocking foul on Purcell. Cameron Purcell picks up his first foul of the game. That's the third team foul now for Potter Dix. Four minutes left to go before the half, and it's 25-16 to 16 in favor of the Coyotes. Badge got to get it in. Finally gets it to Telesis, but it's taken away, and they'll... Get it to Purcell, who lays it up for two more. 27 to 16. Things starting to get away from Hay Springs here late in the second quarter. Good pass that time by Austin Reed. Finds Garrett Wires, who lays it in for two more. And back to a nine point lead at 27 to 18. Three pointer is good. Good grief. Trey Sharman getting into the act with another three pointer. He's got five. And a 30-second timeout called by Coach Jason Badge as that lead has exploded. It's now 30-18. to 18. It's a 12-point lead for Potter Dix here in the second quarter. Pioneer Manor is a premier skilled nursing and assisted living facility located in Hay Springs. We provide rehabilitation services and around-the-clock skilled care in a comfortable and friendly environment. At Pioneer Manor, our guiding principle is to provide outstanding and innovative health care in an environment that remembers the importance of the individual and the family. Our staff of dedicated professionals embodies the values that we cherish most, a nurturing spirit and a commitment to quality. That is the Pioneer Manor in Hay Springs. 
3.30 to go in the second quarter, and it's now a Potter Dix 30-18 lead. They've outscored the Hawks 18-6 in the second quarter, and they now hold a 12-point lead with 3.30 to go before the half. Badge gets it into Insinia, and he accelerates up the floor. Gets it ahead to Garrett Wires. Garrett, good head fake, up and good. Garrett Wires turning into an offensive machine as this season progresses. He's got six points. Purcell nearly traveled with it, and then he throws it away. Had Roselle and threw it behind him, so the Hawks will set it up after another turnover by the Coyotes. They get it into West Celestis. He crosses the timeline, and now he's hung up, but he gets it ahead to Jordan and Sinia. Jordan dribbles out of trouble, and now they'll set the offense with 3.05 to go before the half. Telestis gets it around to Austin Reed on the left wing, in the corner for Badge. Hawks got him out of that zone defense by some good outside shooting, and now the Coyotes into a man-to-man -man defense here. That one's kicked around and out of bounds. It's going to stay with the Hawks. Scramble for it. They're going to say Potter Dix touched that one last. 2.45 to go, second quarter, 30-20. to 20. It's a 10-point lead. Badge gets it into Insinia in the corner. Insinia finds West Telestis, and he'll give it back to Jordan, and he'll dribble up to the top, and they'll reset. Insinia between the circles now dribbles to his left. Finds Austin Reed on the right wing, inside for Garrett Wires. Garrett Wires, pump fake, and misses that one. Now quickly ahead to Johnson, and Johnson just able to catch up with it and track it down. Insinia there to slap the ball out of bounds. And it'll be Potter Dix basketball with 2.22 to go in the second quarter. It is a 30-20 to 20 lead as Insinia nearly steals that one. And they're going to say that uh, Pur Purcell stepped on the sideline trying to gather that one in, and another turnover as Telestis comes out and Drew Letcher back into the game now. They get it into Insinia. Insinia works against Roselle. Man-to-man -man defense now by Potter Dix. All the way in for Insinia, and uh, tried to get it to Austin, or excuse me, Garrett Wires, tipped up and over and into the uh, basket along the wall there, something you don't see every day. Still a 10-point lead after the Hay Springs turnover. Two minutes left to go now here in the second quarter. Purcell top of the key. Roselle on the wing. Inside high post for Christensen. That shot off no good. Rebounded by Jordan Insinia with 1.55 to go. Insinia brings it across and gets it ahead to Eli Badge. Badge drives baseline. And he nearly traveled, but he finds Garrett Wires. Garrett... Misses, gets his own rebound, and puts it back for two more. Garrett Wires with eight first-half points here. 138 to go, and it's back to an eight-point game. They've trailed by as many as 12. The lead is now eight with one and a half to go. There's a three-pointer on the way. That one's off no good, and rebound by Garrett Wires. Wires gets it ahead to Insinia. He brings it across. Now he'll pull it back, and they'll reset. Insinia being guarded closely. Now he gets a little bit of space as he's now got Purcell on him. Swings it across to Reed. Reed finds Letcher at the top of the key. Letcher looks, lets things kind of develop here. Steps in, three-pointer by Drew Letcher. That won't go, rebound pulled down by Purcell. Purcell brings it up, looks down low, slapped away by Garrett Wires and out of bounds. Austin Reed made a game attempt at saving that one back in, couldn't get it done. 57 seconds left now in the first half, and it's a 30-22 Potter Dix lead. They get it across, and Purcell gathers it in. Purcell, top of the key. Shot that time by Sharman won't go, and there's Austin Reed with the rebound, but they're going to call a tie-up, and it's going to stay with Potter Dix with 44 seconds left here in the first half. 30-22, to 22, Potter Dix lead. Sharman will inbound it. Charman throws it out there. It's a foot race. Jordan Insinia wins that race. He'll lay it up, and good. Count the bat. Oh, and a technical foul. Count the basket for Jordan Insinia, and a technical foul count called on Roselle.
So count the basket. That makes it 30 to 24 as Roselle took Insinia into the wall after he made that layup. So Insinia, free throw is up and good. Cuts the lead to five at 30 to 25 and Insinia with one more. Second free throw up and nothing but the bottom of the net two times in a row. Cuts the lead now to four. They trailed by as many as 12, but it's now just a four-point lead, and the Hawks have the basketball with 41 seconds left to go in the first half. So the Hawks hanging tough here, coming back. Encinia on the wing for Reed. Reed thought about the three-pointer, skips it across for Letcher, barely gathered that one in. Letcher goes inside for Reed, or excuse me, Wires, and Wires is fouled from behind by Christensen. On the entry pass, Cole Christensen picks up his first foul. So five team fouls apiece with 30 and a half seconds left to go. Hay Springs with the basketball again. They trail by four, 30 to 26. They'll get it in to Drew Letcher. Has that one slapped away by Purcell, but he gets it back. Offside. Now Encinia skips it across for Austin Reed. He gathers that high pass in. Austin directs some traffic, goes inside for Garrett Wires, and out of bounds. Austin found some traffic, or Garrett Wires, Austin, of course, Garrett's older brother. And Garrett can't handle it as uh, it goes out of bounds. Ten seconds now in the first half. Sharman now back across to Purcell. Now Harms. Harms goes down low for Purcell. That's tipped around. Hawks going to get the tie up with three-tenths of a second left. And Hay Springs with the basketball. And they'd probably just assume that tie-up didn't occur is not going to be able to do much with three-tenths of a second left. And that'll give the basketball to Potter Dix to start the second half. So they let that lead grow to 12, and they've brought it back to just four. Hay Springs trails 26 to 30 as we head to the halftime break here from Potter Dix High School in Potter, Nebraska. Thanks for joining us here on Sheridan County Journal Star.net coverage of Hay Springs Basketball 2015. Sides in Milburn Ford in Rushville is your Sheridan County Ford dealer. They have an excellent service department that works on all makes and models. So why would you drive hours to buy a car from someone you will never see again when you can do business locally with a dealer who will stand behind their product and has the service department to back it up? Sides and Milburn Ford will help you find the right vehicle and they will do it with the personal touch that only your hometown dealer can provide. Stop in at Sides and Milburn Ford in Rushville. They're the people you can trust. So Entertainment here by some young Potter Dix cheerleaders here. We'll let you enjoy that.
of the future of the Potter Dex cheerleading crew. Looks very secure after that performance by some very young Coyote cheerleaders. So let's take a look at some unofficial halftime scoring statistics for the Hay Springs Hawks. Jordan Encinia leads the way with nine first half points. Garrett Wires with eight. Eli Badge added four. Drew Letcher with three. And Austin Reed with two from the line. The Hawks two for two from the free throw line in the first half. And for the Potter Dix Coyotes, Cameron Purcell with 13 points to lead all scorers in the first half. Kelsey Roselle added six. Trace Charman with five. Jake Johnson with four. And Cole Christensen with two. And the Coyotes two for two from the free throw line in the first half. So not a lot of free throws. Just four total between both of the teams. And all four of those free throws made. Five minutes and 40 seconds left on the halftime clock here. We'll step aside and be back ready for second half action from Potter Dix at the half. It is Potter Dix 30 and Hay Springs 26.
just about ready to get the second half underway. As the Hawks trail this one by four at the half, 30 to 26. about ready to get things going. And again, leading scorer for the Hawks, Jordan Ancini with nine, Garrett Wires with eight. And for the Coyotes, Cameron Purcell leads the way with 13 points in the first half. Ready to get things going. A well-played first half, only four free throws shot. We'll see if that continues as we head to the second half. So on the floor to start the second half for the Coyotes, Purcell, Charman, Christensen, Hicks, and let's see who else we've got there, Johnson. So the same starting five out there. And for the Hawks, who are going to come out in this 2-3 zone, we've got Letcher, Insinia, Badge, Wires, and Reed. So the starting five is both back on the floor. To start the second half, we are underway. Johnson on the wing. Johnson, now he's... Finally going to find Charman, or excuse me, no, that's Purcell. It comes up between the circles to get the pass to get things started. On the wing for Hicks. Hicks to Christensen. Christensen back out. The Charmin for Chris. The key. The Coyotes. As they turn it over. 7-0. In the third quarter. Badge asking for. Johnson. There's. Zincinia coming away with the steal again. 6.52 to go. And the Hawks back with it. Ready to take a little bit but better care of the basketball this time as they bring it up the floor. Insinia thought about the three-pointer. Reed on the wing. Goes inside for Wires. Wires kicks it out. Badge knocks that one down. Eli Badge, four quick points here to start the second half. And it's back to a three-point game. It's 33-30 with 6.30 to go in the third quarter. Hicks on the left wing. Up top for Christensen. Oh, Christensen he gave Insinia a little chin music there. As he went past him, but that's going to be out of bounds on the missed shot off of Potter Dix. Hay Springs will get the basketball. They'll get it in to Austin Reed, or they'll try it anyway. Christensen loses the basketball, and a timeout called is just about to have a tie-up called that time. Christensen maintained possession, and the timeout called by Potter Dix. 30-second timeout gives us the opportunity to remind you to thank today's sponsors of today's basketball action. They allow us to come out on the road so you don't have to. Those sponsors of today's game, Pioneer Manor, Security First Bank of Hay Springs, and the Sand Hills State Bank. 33-30 is the score here in the third quarter. Just getting things underway in the second half. Hay Springs will have the basketball with, oh, no, they won't. Excuse me, that is... Uh, Potter Dix, they called the timeout. They've got the basketball with 6.17 to go in the third quarter and the three-point lead. Charmin to inbound the basketball. Goes inside for Johnson. Has it ripped away by Austin Reed, but he'll get it back. In the corner for Purcell. He'll skip it all the way across to Christensen. Now back between the circles to Purcell as we approach six minutes to go. Johnson drives in. He's fouled by Drew Letcher. Drew Letcher picks up his second foul of the game. So out of bounds as Sharman gets ready to inbound it for Potter Dix. 6.01 to go. In the third quarter, they find Christensen all alone in the lane. And he drops that one in. Cole Christensen now with four points on the afternoon. And Sinia will bring it up. And the Coyotes just provide man full court pressure there. And so does the, or the, the Hawks figure that out. They'll clear out and let Insinia bring it across. Eli Badge drives to the baseline. Now he'll 
pull it back out. Garrett wires that Go shot won't go. Garrett tries to get the rebound. Relay badge with the rebound. He misses everything. And now we're gonna get, I think Drew Letcher just picked up his third foul. They did get him on that one. And that is three for Drew. Two team fouls in the second half for the Hawks. 5.30 to go, and it's a five-point lead for Potter Dix at 35-30. to 30. Purcell in the corner, goes inside for Christensen, finds Johnson coming down the lane, shot won't go, but he is fouled and will head to the line. They're going to give that foul to Garrett Wires. That is his second. And it puts Jake Johnson at the line for two free throws. He's got four points so far today. And make that five as the first free throw falls in. West Plus is going to come in and replace Austin Reed. And Johnson with one more free throw. Makes it 36-30 to 30 with 5.19 to go in the third quarter. Second free throw by Johnson is off the mark. No good. There's Drew Letcher to pull down the rebound. Insinia with the basketball and brings it up, working against Purcell. Insinia drives in, pulls it back out. Now they'll reset. Insinia swings it over to Letcher. Letcher drives into the free throw line. Tries to go inside for Badge. Badge was double covered. Garrett Wires can't get the shot to go. And the Coyotes come away from it with 4.45 to go in the third quarter. Sharman loses the handle but gets it back. Six point lead for Potter Dix. They go inside for Christensen. His shot off the front of the rim no good. There's Johnson with the rebound and the putback. Purcell with the rebound. That one's short. Hawks can't seem to get a break here as now we've got a tie up and Hayes brings basketball on the alternating possession. Dakota Hiding now comes into the game to replace Drew Letcher. 4.30 to go, third quarter, 36 to 30 is the lead for Potter Dix. Badge gets it into Insinia and he'll bring it up the floor in a hurry. Slapped out of bounds by Christensen, quick hands that time. As Christensen slapped it out of bounds as Insinia went by and able to do that without drawing the foul. They get it back in to Insinia and he'll set it up with 422 to go, third quarter. Hawks trail by six, they get it to Telestis. High post attempt for Garrett Wires, but it's taken away. Johnson went to the floor and lays it in for two more. He's got seven on the afternoon, makes it a 38 to 30 game. Eli Badge, baseline jumper, rattles around and good. Eli Badge having a good second half as he's got six points here, 10 on the day. Cuts it to a six point lead at 38 32. That shot rolls off by Purcell, no good. Dakota Hiding saves it back in, and Sinia with the basketball. And they'll get it ahead. They've got Telestis out in front of everybody, and Telestis couldn't quite get a hold of it. Tried to put it up, and just not quite enough time. And it comes back the other way. Coyotes in command, 38 32, with 3.35 to go in the third quarter. Charmin on the wing. Tosses it across for Purcell. That's going to be tracked down by Hicks. And now they'll reset. Purcell to Hicks on the wing. Drives into the lane. Pull up jumper partially blocked. And he traveled with it. Turnover back to the Hawks as Reed in and Flustus back out. 3.18 to go, third quarter. Roselle replaces Sharman. Austin Reed takes the inbounds pass. And brings it across the timeline, dribbling down the right side, clear to the baseline, loses the handle and gets it back. That one slapped away by Hicks as he tried to go inside the badge. Hay Springs maintains possession, 3.09 to go, third quarter. They trail by 6, 38, 32. They set the inbounds play. Badge gets it into Austin Reed, reverse layup, that won't go, rebound Christensen. Quickly out ahead to Johnson. Insinia there, Insinia. No foul call as Johnson lays that one in. And these refs let a lot of contact go. That's the way they called the girls game and that's, that's how they call it. Nothing wrong with that. Just have to adjust as Badge gets it out to Wires. Now he'll skip it up to Hiding. Hiding drives into the free throw line and loses it. That's taken away by Roselle. He gets it to 
Purcell. And he brings it up. Christensen in the high post. Down low for Johnson. That one won't go. And there's Eli Badge with the rebound. And we're going to have a foul on Potter Dix, their first of the second half. They're going to give that foul to Jake Johnson. That is his second. 2.22 to go in the third quarter. 40-32 to 32 is the score in favor of the Coyotes as Hiding comes out. Andrew Letcher back in. Now Purcell going to take a little breather. Badge gets it into Insinia. He turns and heads up the floor. Finds Garrett Wires all by himself. Garrett's not going to miss that one. Garrett's got 10 on the afternoon. And it's a six-point game, 40 to 34. 2.10 to go third quarter. Christensen has it slapped away by Insinia. Now he'll go into the corner. That's going to be... Oh, that was touched by the Coyotes. And they missed it. But it'll stay with Potter Dix. Austin Reed got a hand on it. Doesn't matter as that one's going to be thrown away and that will go back over to the Hawks. And so the Hawks get the turnover under two to go. They trail by six, 40 to 34 here in the third quarter. Insinia, the pass just a little too long, but Garrett Wires is there. Insinia gathers up the pass from Garrett in the corner for Austin Reed. One handed pass all the way across and a little too tall for Eli Badge that time. Hay Springs turns it back over. 146 to go. They trail it 40 to 34. Third quarter going quickly. Hicks up top for Christensen. Swings it around. Roselle in the corner. That shot no good and rebounded by Austin Reed. He's nearly traveled with it. That one's tipped out of bounds by Roselle coming back. Hawks having trouble getting their feet under him. Lucky they didn't get called for a traveling call. They were able to get the ball out of their hands and maintain possession of it. But now they've got to deal with that pressure. To get it into Insinia, and he'll bring it up the floor, working against Roselle. Insinia. And has his pocket pit. Here comes Christensen. Christensen going to be fouled. Christensen knocks that one down. And the foul on Insinia. Christensen will have one more free throw and a chance at the three-point play. It's 42-34 to 34 with 1.15 to go in the third quarter. That free throw is no good. Rebounded by Hicks. His putback is off the mark. Rebounded by Drew Lester. Now Drew has it taken away. Now they go back ahead to Roselle. Roselle pulls it back out. Now he wants to go inside for Christensen. Working against Wires. Wires with the rebound. And Christensen going to be called for the, uh, for the uh, foul as he came over the back. That is his second foul. Two team fouls now in the half for Potter Dix. And Sinia takes the inbounds pass. We're under a minute to go in the third quarter. Brings it up against Roselle. Badge in the corner. They'll get it back to Insinia. 48 seconds left. Insinia pulls it back. Now he switches hands. Working against Johnson. Insinia picks up his dribble, gets it to Drew Letcher. He says, I'll take that shot. Can't quite get it to go. And here comes Hicks. Hicks crosses the timeline with 30 seconds to go. And now Roselle will back it out. They'll set the offense for one last play before the end of the half. Get it across to Sharman. Now back to Roselle. They're going to hold for the last shot. Sharman drives all the way into the paint, but he left something behind. He lost the basketball. Tie up on the floor, and it'll be Coyote basketball with 8.8 .8 seconds left in the third quarter. 42-34. And we've got a timeout on the floor. As Johnson comes off rubbing his head. Purcell ready to come back in for Potter Dix. One minute timeout with 8.8 .8 seconds left to go in the third quarter. It's Potter Dix 42 and Hay Springs 34. Tim Marlatt and Brian Felker at Physical Therapy West and Gordon have over 30 years of combined experience in providing physical therapy and sports medicine services. Contact PT West for care following injuries, sprains, fractures, or treatment of joint, muscle, and back pain. 
PT West provides individualized rehabilitation following joint replacement, surgery, or stroke. Don't suffer. Don't live with pain. And get back to the activities you enjoy. Call PT West at 308-282-0203 or stop by with questions at 100 South Main in Gordon. So 8.8 .8 seconds left to go third quarter. Potter Dix with the basketball at their own end. They lead this one by eight. Four team fouls for the Hawks here in the second half. Two team fouls for Potter Dix. So the Hawks trying to play some defense here and keep that lead at just eight as they head to the fourth quarter. They get it in to Christensen. Christensen back to Sharman, tips it out to Purcell. Purcell's jumper at the buzzer, and that won't go. Rebounded by Drew Letcher. And the buzzer a little later than what I anticipated. Either way, shot won't go. And the third quarter ends. Hawks on the short end of this one, 42 to 34, as we head to the fourth quarter from Potter Dix High School. When it comes to your land, it pays to be smart. At New Holland, smart means giving you a wide range of options to fit your needs, like smooth cutting, flood-free conditioning, and versatility. Smart means putting more hay in the bale and leaving less in the field. It also means providing exceptional after-sale support and growing a legacy that goes far beyond equipment. That's New Holland Smart. Visit your local New Holland dealer today. to the fourth quarter. Hay Springs trails this one by a 42 to 34. Say thanks to today's sponsors for bringing you some great basketball action today. Pioneer Manor, Security First Bank of Hay Springs and the Sand Hills State Bank. Eight minutes left on the fourth quarter clock. Hay Springs with the basketball. They'll inbound it to get things underway. Jordan Insinia has it and away we go. Hawks need to make up a four-point deficit here as Roselle went for the steal. Insinia finds Garrett Wires streaking to the basket. Can't get the shot to fall, but he is fouled. Good look that time by Insinia as he found Wires inside. They're going to give that foul to Christensen. That is his third. Wires lines it up. He's got 10 this afternoon. Make it 11. He's got one more coming, 42-35, and he makes them both. The Hawks four for four from the free throw line here this afternoon. Back to a six-point game, 7.43 left to go, 42-36. to Roselle drives in, kicks it out. That's tipped out of bounds. That's going to be Hay Springs Hawk basketball. It was either Sharman or Hicks that reached up to try and grab that ball and instead ended up tipping it out of bounds. Johnson now comes back in to replace Hicks in the Potter Dix lineup. 7.37 to go, fourth quarter, 42-36. They get it into Insinia. He'll work against Roselle and bring it up the floor. Drew Letcher on the left wing, looks, and he finds Eli Badge on the baseline. Eli, not much there. Gets it back out to Letcher. Letcher pull up jumper. That won't go, but he gets his own rebound. The put back, and he is fouled. Drew heads to the line. He'll have two free throws. They give that foul to Jake Johnson. That is his third. And Letcher heads to the line. He's got three points this afternoon. First free throw by Letcher is short and no good. First free throw missed by the Hawks today. They're four for five. 7.18 left to go, and missed them both. Picked up by Roselle, now he'll push it. Comes across the timeline, finds Johnson. Johnson, pull up jumper. Little floater, that won't go. Rebounded by Letcher, has it poked out of bounds by Sharman that time. But the Hawks maintain possession with 7.07 to go. Still trailing by six. Referee Warren and Johnson that he cannot cross that end line as he's trying to deny that inbounds pass. They get it into Insinia. And we've got seven minutes left 
in the fourth quarter. Insinia dribbles to his right, down into the corner. Picks up his dribble, and now he's got to do something with it. He finds Drew Letcher, skips it across to Austin Reed. Eli Batch drives into the lane, and he has his pocket picked. And that's Sharman who did the deed with the theft that time. Sharman head fake. That shot high off the glass, and I think we're going to get Johnson. No, we're going to, yes, we are. We're going to get Johnson with the foul. Johnson came in hard on that rebound and picked up his fourth foul. So four now for Jake Johnson, 6.30 to go. Insinia brings it up the floor. Jordan Insinia with the Hawks trailing by six. Drew Letcher pulls that pass in, and now they'll reset. They find Austin Reed. Austin Reed works against Sharman, drives all the way in, little scoop shot, can't get it to go. Jordan Insinia pulls the trigger on the three-pointer, and that rebound pulled down by Johnson and Austin Reed, I think is who they're going to give this foul to. Official processing it, trying to decide, and they're going to give that one to Drew Letcher, and that is Drew's fourth foul. As now Harms comes into the game to replace Johnson for Potter Dix. Drew Letcher will head to the bench, and Tlustis back into the game for the Hawks. So fouls starting to impact the players on the floor at this point as four fouls for players on each team. Now they'll leave it for Purcell. Purcell working against Telestis. Now he finds Harms just trying to kill some time. Potter Dix just going to apparently try to stall the whole rest of the way. It's going to be hard to pull five minutes and 40 seconds off the clock as the Hawks get the turnover. And they're going to try and make him pay. Insinia gets it ahead to Telestis. Telestis finds Austin Reed at the top of the key. Austin pull up jumper from the elbow. That's off the mark, no good. But there's Jordan Insinia with the rebound. Finds Telestis back to Insinia. Once that three pointer won't take it, drives in, leaves it for Garrett Wires, knocks it down. Garrett Wires with two more. And the Hawks are back within four. 5.05 left to go, fourth quarter. We've got a game, folks. Purcell, high post for Harms. Back outside to Purcell. Into Harms, now back out to Roselle. They find Purcell cutting to the basket, and they're going to get Austin Reed for his third foul. Sixth team foul for the Hawks. Now they find Christensen. Good block by Eli Bad, but Christensen gets it back and converts it. He's got six in the second half, eight on the game. 4.45 to go and back to a six point game. 44 to 38. And Sinia gets it across to Telestis. Now, I think they were trying to go to Garrett Wires at the high post, but Sinia took that pass and missed the shot. Now here comes Purcell, and just going to take their time are the Coyotes. Now Purcell picks up his dribble, bad spot to do that, and Austin Reed just picked up his fourth. They're going to get him for the blocking foul, and that'll put the Coyotes into the bonus, one and one. So Dakota Hiding comes in, Austin Reed heads to the bench. And that'll put Trace Sharman at the line for the one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Johnson back in for Christensen now. Trace Sharman with five points. And he's got a one-on-one -on -one here. 419 left to go, fourth quarter, 44-38. Potter Dix with the lead. Sharman's first free throw is good. But he'll get another one. 45-38 now. Lead up to seven. Plenty of time left here. That one's off the back of the rim. Rattles around, no good. And Eli Badge comes out of there with it. Finds Insinia, and the Hawks go to work on offense. Insinia works against Roselle. He finds Telestis. Now back to Insinia on the wing. Now back to Telestis. Insinia hasn't scored here in the second half. He not had nine in the first half. They've done a good job of shutting him down. 
most of that because they came out of that zone defense. He was getting some good looks. A little behind the back pass to hiding that time. Now back to Insinia. Clock running. Under 3.45 to go now. Insinia tees it up for three. That one's off. No good. And here comes Johnson with the rebound. Johnson pushing the pace. All the way in. Lays it up. And no good. Tips out of there. And that's Harms with the long arms that pulls it in. But then they turn it back over. And the Hawks have the basketball. We've got a timeout on the floor called by Hay Springs. 3.26 left to go, fourth quarter, 45 to 38. Let's uh, reset here just a little bit. Hawks trail it by seven in the fourth quarter. Hawks with five team, or excuse me, the Hawks with seven team fouls. So Potter Dix in the one and one bonus. Potter Dix with five team fouls. So the Hawks two fouls away from getting into that bonus. Hawks have three timeouts left in the game and Potter Dix with just two timeouts left. Ready to head down the home stretch here. 326 left to go in the fourth quarter and the Hawks trailing by seven. They have the basketball as they get ready to inbound it and now a Eli Badge asking the official some questions. Got the answer, and we're ready to get things underway. Has it taken away by Johnson, but his shot falls off no good. Lustis with the rebound, and Sinia has it. No damage done there, and he comes up the floor working against Roselle. That one's tipped and taken away. Purcell comes away with it as we work our way towards three minutes left in the game. They go high post for Harms. Inside for Johnson. Turnaround jumper in the lane he is good. Jake Johnson with seven in the second half. He's got 11 on the game. And Sinia quickly up the left side. All the way in. Leaves it for Wires. Wires one dribble high off the glass. And rebounded by Roselle. Purcell brings it across. And the Hawks going to have to put some pressure on. As that's a backcourt violation. Purcell lost the handle. And another turnover. Back to the Hawks. Hay Springs trails it by nine. 47 to 38 with 238 left to go in the game. They get it into Insinia. Jordan scoreless here in the second half. Dribbles to his right. Tees it up for three. And can't get it to go. Austin Reed puts some pressure on, but Harms comes away with the basketball. Harms with those that long frame and those long arms, able to pull that rebound down. There's Sharman with the short shot, and Insinia took another blow on the rebound that time, but he gets up, he's okay, and he'll bring it up the floor for the Hawks with 2.09 to go. Ahead to Tlustis, off his hands and out of bounds. They turn it back over to Potter Dix. Christensen ready to check back in now for the Coyotes. He'll take the place of Harms. 2.05 to go. Potter Dix with the nine point lead. Hawks have got some work to do here. They find Roselle out top, guarded by Tlustis. And we got a timeout called by Potter Dix. 1.51 left to go in this one. Nine point lead, 47 to 38. Security First Bank of Hay Springs is your hometown bank. So proudly supporting the Hawks, their FDIC insured, and an equal opportunity lender. Security First Bank, a relationship you can count on. Pioneer Manor is a premier skilled nursing and assisted living facility located in Hay Springs. We provide rehabilitation services and around-the-clock skilled care in a comfortable and friendly environment. At Pioneer Manor, our guiding principle is to provide outstanding and innovative health care in an environment that remembers the importance of the individual and the family. Our staff of dedicated professionals embodies the values that we cherish most. A nurturing spirit and a commitment to quality. That is the Pioneer Manor of Hay Springs. So 151 left to go in this one. Hay Springs trails it by nine. Potter Dix with the basketball to get it into Purcell. And they'll just try to kill some time here as they've got the big lead under two minutes to go. Purcell 
That ball is kicked by Wires, and they'll reset it. Give it back to the Coyotes with 1.45 to go. Purcell gets it in. That is Roselle. Around to Charlin. Charlin dribbles him to the free throw line. That one's taken away by Jordan Insinia. Two on one. Insinia to Reed. Poked away. As that was Charman trailing the play, got in there and knocked that pass away. So the Hawks with the basketball, 1.32 to go, fourth quarter. Still trailing by nine. They get it into Austin Reed, pivots around, puts the shot up. That won't go, rebounded by Johnson. Quickly ahead to Christensen, back behind the defense. Christensen gathers himself, goes up, and puts it in. Christensen now with 10 on the game. 49-38, under 1.15 to go now. In the corner for Bad. Bad works in, pull up jumper. That one's off the mark, won't go. Rebound out to Drew Letcher. Letcher out to Encinia. Hawks gonna have to put some up from long range as we're now under a minute. Letcher, three pointer, that one is short. Rebound pulled down by Garrett Wire. Shot up, it's good. Garrett Wire and one. 49-38 with 50.6 seconds left to go. 49-40 now as they update the scoreboard. It's back to a nine point lead. And Garrett Wires misses that free throw short. So it stays at nine. 47, 46 seconds left. Insinia trying to get the foul. Finally, he does. And Insinia picks up his second. And that'll put Purcell at the line for the one and one opportunity. The thing's slipping away here for the Hawks. There's still an opportunity, but things have really got to roll their way. They trail by nine. They need some help. And they're not getting it from Cameron Purcell as he makes the first. It's now a 10-point lead. Purcell lines up his second one, and he knocks them both down. And surprisingly, those are the first two free throws of the afternoon for Cameron Purcell. But he made them both. 40 seconds left to go now. Quickly up ahead, and Purcell picks off the pass. Back the other way, three on one. Johnson lays that one up. Jake Johnson puts in two more. It's 53 to 40. And time going to run out on the Hay Springs Hawks here as we're under 25 to go. Jordan Encinia inside to Eli Bad. Shot up, but he is fouled. Christensen with the foul, and that is his fourth. Oh, excuse me, that is his fifth on this one somewhere along the way. Christensen fouls out. So into the game comes Edward Barnes. And in the Hay Springs good sportsmanship style, uh, Insinia and Lecter both come over to uh, shake the hand of Christensen after he fouls out. And now Potter Dick's going to call off the dogs with 19 seconds left. They're going to put some reserves into the ball game here and let those starters come out of the game. A game well played as they're going to come out on top in this one. They lead it by 13. 53 to 40 with 19 seconds left. Badge's first free throw is short and no good. But he's got one more coming. Eli Badge knocks the second one down. 53 to 41. 16 seconds left, Fox trying to make something happen here. And that one's thrown out of bounds. A wild pass that time by Edward Barnes. One-handed, kind of a big old hook shot. And sent it clear up into the bleachers that time. Hawks will toss it in with 12 seconds left to go. And Cindy across the timeline. They'll find Austin Reed on the wing. Reed drives in, throws up the shot. That won't go. There's Garrett Wires. He adds two more to the total. Too little, too late. 53 to 43 is the final score. Hay Springs Hawks fall again by 10, but but it was an outstanding effort from end to end by the Hay Springs Hawks. They keep improving every game. They're getting closer. 
And they're going to break through one of these days and get things done. They've got two wins on the season. They fall to two and nine here this afternoon. And the Potter Dix Coyotes improve their record to four and seven. We'll step aside one last time and be back with some final scoring totals for you after just a second here. So let's take a look at some final scoring totals. First for the Hay Springs Hawks, leading the way today in a big way. Garrett Wires with 18 points. Eli Badge had 11. Jordan Insinia with nine. All nine of those coming in the first half as the Potter Dix Coyotes did a great job of bottling him up in the second half. Drew Letcher finished with three, and Austin Reed added two. On the afternoon, the Hawks five for nine from the free throw line. For the victorious Potter Dix Coyotes. Cameron Purcell led the way with 18 points. Jake Johnson added 13. Cole Christensen with 10. Kelsey Roselle with 6. And Trace Sharman also with 6. And the Coyotes 6 for 9 from the free throw line. So a pair of very evenly matched teams. And in the end, the Coyotes come away with the 10-point victory. Say thanks to today's sponsors, Pioneer Manor, Security First Bank of Hay Springs, and the Sand Hills State bank thanks very much for joining us stay tuned check the website for the current schedule to see where we're headed to next glad to have you along here today as the hawks fall uh, the boys varsity hawks fall 53 to 43 the girls earlier this afternoon fell by a final score of 37 to 29 until next time, this is Clint Anderson saying thank you very much for joining us for Sheridan County Journal Star.net coverage of Hay Springs Basketball 2015.